I added uh, Paul Walker on Xbox. <sighs> Only thing is, he spends most of his time on the dashboard. <gasps> oh! <laughs> The wife said the Hoover was broken. I asked her, well, what's wrong with it? And she said it wants sucking. I said, don't worry, it's probably just got married. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, hit it. Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another episode of In the Doghouse, the podcast that doesn't need any sexual harassment training because it's already really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the fucking bell. Housekeeping. Buy the merch. It's on the website. It's good shit. Um, yeah. This is your final warning for t-shirts. Oh, yeah. I'm going to turn them off on Sunday. They're gone. Bye-bye. That's Bye. It. That's, gone. Deleted. Two days to get those t-shirts and that, those designs will never be back. And don't bitch and moan at me when you forgot. Yeah, uh, new stuff, as we keep saying, new stuff's in the works. It's yeah, definitely stuff. It's definitely stuff, and it's definitely things in the works. I don't know how we're not salesmen here at the podcast. Uh, uh, when it comes out, buy it. Yeah, that's it's good. It is a thing you can do. And do you know what else you can do, Marlon? Join the fucking Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like subtlety, is there? <laughs> Join the Patreon if you like what we do here and you really enjoy it. Why not financially contribute to the madness? You don't worry, you won't get flagged up for uh, supporting a fund of <laughs> religious fundamentalists or yet. extremism yet. Um, but yeah, you can become a Patreon for as little as one pound twenty five a month, all the way up to six quid. Uh, all levels of a Patreon get you into the Discord, our little crazy chat room where all of the absolute debauchery, sadisticness, and I don't know, fucked Shit. up, fucked upness goes. I, I, mm. It's a whole level of madness on there, isn't it? It's you, just, you just need to look at it. It's pretty wild, yeah. So, and if you're a top tier Patreon, six pound a month, you can get ten percent off the merch. And trust 10. me, that six nine percent. Oh wow! Uh, and that will pay dividends in a minute when the new stuff comes out. So yeah, and uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, only yourselves and the sponsors that keep this show going. So. If you wish to find without you, there's no electricity, no there's, beer. There's no nothing. There's no no nothing. kit. No fuck all. We are just two idiots screaming into the void. Um, and not that that's not what it is now. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and if you're also if you're a patron, what are you automatically emptied into, Marlon? The Pit Viper giveaway. The Pit Viper giveaway, which is last Friday this month. Can't remember. We it's, said it's going to be the Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Oh, because you're away, are you? I think um, Chief is putting her foot down i think we are fucking off in the van oh nice so going dogging that's gonna <laughs> you, gotta be camping. Up, you gotta be upside down pineapple on, <laughs> on the uh, on the wing mirror there, on the way there oh shall I? yes uh so yeah well, what thursday's that marlon uh, while um, i tell the people um, <laughs> what? it's the thursday before the friday yeah I don't know what day that is. But yeah, we'll be live on the... The 28th. The, the 28th. On the 28th, 28th we'll of be March. live on, the, uh, on YouTube. Me on and Marlon. On the YouTube channel. Basically doing what we do now with even less filters. Um, titting around in Marlon's dining room, giving away... And you can see us as well. It's weird as shit. Giving away two pairs of Pit Vipers to you beautiful patrons that support the podcast. Um, yeah, and so... You, ain't got you to do might nothing. even get a look in at something. Oh, oh yeah. Actually, that's a point. Yeah, some stuff. Maybe you get to a little secret look at what we're up to. Um, right, just one more thing. One, one more thing. <laughs> so a lot of people have been uh, wanting some things. Right. Um, That's just... high vis beanies are back in back in stock. Yep. And I've started putting together like a little little thing of what people want high vis wise. Oh right. So I'm, I'm the... going to do a few little bits. Ah, if it's... you're on the Discord, you get first dibs. You get first look in. You even get some say in what's going to go on. Yeah. So, um, we don't understand high vis. Neither mm, of us need no. to wear it, so we don't know. You no. guys tell us what you want, and we'll, we'll. If I get run over at work, I get run over. That's it. Yeah, There's no one's no one's business but the insurance <laughs> man. Uh, right, yeah, and uh, finally, before we get into the show, a massive shout out to the sponsor of this episode, Sean de Chef, Sean de Chef. <laughs> <laughs> buy his fucking biscuits <laughs> buy his my little Johnny and my little <laughs> buy him a fucking brownie uh, no massive shout out to Sean the Chef I literally popped down to Clark's Village this weekend while I went to go buy some pans that were wank uh, but was, wasn't wank <laughs> was Sean the Chef's goods that's what made up for the shit pans that I bought when I came back and saw they were all scratched and dented because they were X demos I had what do you expect well I had to have a deal didn't I on oh, some X demos for fuck's sake <laughs> um, anyway that's not the point the point is Sean the Chef I I, I I say this all the time his stuff is just on another level not only is it on another level of cookie pies and brookies and 
chocolate and just all basically everything. Don't forget the cheesecakes. Uh, cheese, the, yeah, cheesecakes. It's um, the stuff that he does. It, it not only is it fantastic, you can also order it online. If you if you can't get down to Clark's Village or you can't get down to any of the shows or food fairs that he does, you can order it online. How easy is that? At SeanTheChef.shop. The link will be in the uh, episode description and in the bio. Um, and it's he's, uh, from what I understand, and no, he's the only guy in the UK that's actually doing a pick-your-own-box. It's not like a oh, generic... You get, it, you get you, six things, yeah. that's that kind of thing. No, it's not like that. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. So he's not only that, like you said... He caters for weddings. He caters for uh, corporate events. Uh, all of his, you know, tiny little treats or big treats. Anything whatever, you need whatever cakes you need. for. Huge cheesecakes, slab, cookie oh, slabs. Oh. Um, yeah, I know. It's uh, it's on another level. It's so, really good shit. Yeah, so a massive shout out to Sean. If you're looking for something, even if it's just a present for your mother or your sister or your brother or your missus or whatever, just go on there, order a load of stuff and have it sent to your house. It's it freshly baked to order. Sean the chef, massive shout out to you. Buy his biscuits. Buy his, <laughs> buy, buy his biscuits. <laughs> I'll never, Love you, Falvey. <laughs> Falvey doing the ad read for Sean. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Right, and on with the episode. Right, Marlon, who are we joined by this evening? Reg, we got your dad on. We've got, I managed to talk my old man into coming down on the show. After three years of doing uh, of doing this talk radio <laughs> thing that my son does, uh, we, managed to, we managed to get dad down. So yeah, welcome to the show, dad. Hello, Mark. For everyone else that's uh, that's listening, uh, yeah, is it is it weird being on here and seeing behind the scenes of? Uh, are you, well, I'm always telling you, uh, oh, I'm doing a podcast tonight, or I'm recording tomorrow, I'm doing this. Is it weird to see it in action now? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it a bit more of a slick operation than you thought? Uh, yeah, it is a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it it's like, a bit like being in a radio station, isn't it? But more shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Dad. Appreciate That's fine. it. Um, you, I think you, you said the whole film was going to fucking listen to this. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. Uh, put it that way. Um, right. Marlon, let's start off with you, mate. You've had a bit of a busy one. How's your fucking week been, mate? It has been really fucking good. Where have you been? Uh, not working on shit Land Rovers. <laughs> uh, I went to Ireland. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a drink while talking, mate. I went to Country to Country Festival in Ireland. Northern Ireland? Yeah, at the top Belfast. Oh, right. So, Country to Country, for anyone that doesn't know, is like a three-day event with country artists, funnily enough, doing slots in the evening uh, from like five o'clock till 11-ish. There will be four acts a night in the Belfast and Glasgow one. There's a bit more going on in the London What is this? Setup. Folk music, is it? No, country music. Country. West of Cowboy music. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. The artists, like, I go to a lot of music events anyway, but watching some of these people Thank that you. I never thought I'd get to see perform, actually perform live, blows your fucking mind. Like who? Uh, I, I'll take you through the full lineup. We won't you, know any of no. them. So, uh, not Drake Dolly Milligan. Parton then? No, no, no. Nah, she's Kenny's old, gone now, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Drake Milligan, L King, Brothers Osborne, they were fantastic. Old Dominion, uh, Lauren Elena, Carly Pierce, Kane Brown. I'm sure this means a lot to you and everyone. Priscilla that... Block, do you know, she what, was do you know what he's on about, Tom? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, nor do I. Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly was like the weekend maker. Because yeah. I'd never really heard of him, and I didn't realise until Chris said he's half of Florida Georgia Line, which also means nothing to you two. Um, <laughs> he's half of a band, and he's doing solo shit now. Uh, Jake Owen and Brad Paisley. Why, it sounds wonderful, mate. Well, the, about, about the band you like. Oh, the, dead, the, the Dead South? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. How did I, it was like mind reader, that is. No, I've been to go see them with Marlon before. That's country, isn't it? Yeah, mm, it is. Yeah, it's country, but it's Mix. more bluegrass. What's bluegrass? For Christ's sake, it's a drug, isn't it? It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like bluegrass is like steel guitar, banjo yeah. kind of thing. A bit more, it's even more, it's more like redneck. Proper, yeah, more like, hick. Yeah, proper, like down in the bayous. That was fucking amazing. Huge thanks to uh, Chris and Crystal for putting up with us all weekend. It was and, good though, yeah? Yeah, really, really good. Awesome. Did you fly? Yeah, flew over. Um, tickets come out. You didn't take the van, Marlon. No, because we'd booked the... Because they'd fucking steal it. He won't go... <laughs> He won't go and dog him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a transit. I ain't going to steal it, mate. It no, good, no good for tarmac. <laughs> Tickets come out today for next year. Oh, so you've already 
Yeah, no. today when it comes out Friday. Yeah, it's, oh, so you're going to be uh, booking them out yeah. there, like. But what Beth also got today? Yeah, Morgan Wallen tickets. Oh, uh, I do know him, and he is good. Yeah, at Hyde Park. I've never been there. Hyde Park. Yeah, I don't know, man. I know Hyde Park, but I don't know they do gigs there. Well, so. it's fine if it doesn't rain. You yeah. outside. <laughs> Think positive, it'll be fine. It's in the, the voice it's, of optimism, my old man. It's in July, it'll be fine. Oh, fucking rain. Yeah, so that's it. That's, right. That sounds good, man. Fucking love country music. If you're interested in country music, highly recommend it. No. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't really directed at you, Mark. Oh, well, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, I just... It, it's it, it, one of the best weekends I've had in a while. It's fucking brilliant. Good. It was weird not having you here this weekend. I had loads of sh- not loads of shit to do, but stuff kept turning up at my door, and I was like, "Is this what it's like to be Marlon?" <laughs> like all this, oh. <laughs> all this podcast <laughs> shit just keeps turning up. And oh yeah, thanks to Julie for um, having the newest order of shit coming <laughs> as well. Oh yeah, she got it just as bad as I have. What turned up at your house, Rich? What turned up at my house? Well, Marlon decided that he was well decided. He we've been banging on about it for a while. So he said, oh, can, I'm going to order this big desk. And he said, if you fuck it, you need it, get it. And you were like, yeah, yeah, it's coming on Monday or something. I, just, I got his text from the missus. And it was just like the words, cool, I've just put a fucking shift in. I was like, on what? Whatever Marlon's just fucking ordered. It's all, I'm sorry, Dale. Jesus Christ. I thought you literally thought you'd ordered a kitchen. It's in a lot more boxes than I thought it would oh, be. I am not looking forward to putting that together. Yeah, just get the Yaga Dugger out and put them together. Honey, yeah. Some self-tappers. My old man loves flat pack. He used to, be, whenever it come to screws, he just hammer them in. <laughs> you twist them the last bit. <laughs> <laughs> Saves time, efficiency. That's what mother used to say. She used to say, God, you don't want to be flat back your old man. Why is that? You get the screws, just hammers them in, then just, <laughs> there you go, that's tight. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fucking lethal. Yeah. So, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. How's your week been, mate? How's my week been? Uh, my week's been all right, mate. I haven't had too much on of it. You work with your father. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's You're, telling you now. This is a party line. Everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been good. Yeah, everything's it been a, uh, fair. Like I said last week, a bit quiet and down this week. I think it's the calm before the storm, if anything. But yeah, it's been all right. To be honest, not too much on. Um, I've had the shits all week, which has been a bit difficult. Uh, you, um, you back on the heel again? No, no. I I was very confused. I was like, God, and what is going on? Like, why? What is? I'm blowing. I mean, the Indian didn't help. Oh, I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not a man for Indian, and I've told. Every, I've always stood by this. I don't fucking like Indian food. Uncun- uncultured swine. Um, yeah, so, it's, it's just like telling Emily on your head be it if you go in that room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the, if you all, if you faint in there. I'm not coming to get you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just I'll leave a little bit of string there. Just pull twice. <laughs> I went to um, I went out for Indian, and um, I don't like Indian, but Mule seemed to reckon. Oh, don't worry, you just never ordered right or whatever. So oh, all right, I'll fucking go out. Where do you go to? Oh, the new one down in town. Yeah, and um, that's good down there. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm just don't. I just don't like Indian <laughs> do you food. Have a fucking omelet. In the words of a dear friend of ours, Rat. The problem is, it's fucking. We're not designed to eat it. See, we're not like them. You know that fucking coconut litter ain't no good for us. It ain't called NASA, is it? Oh no, no. Fuck it. I don't know what the fuck it was. But it was all. Uh, well, it was good food, but I just. It, what, what did you have? I don't know. A bir- biryani. I want to oh, say yeah. a chicken biryani. But the thing is, he would come out with it fucking great tray and he rolling it along, and then there's all the tea lights he's got to put out and then the shit goes on the tea lights and then there's a there's to keep it warm there's make it hotter fucking peshwari naan and then there's bloody papa doms and fucking rice and all this and I'm like what the fuck is going on like well who's his who's taste sensation we got the little chutney and the spinner and all that oh anyway so that was that and I thought that was what give me a shit oh. no turns out not it'd been going on all week and I was like but what sat there like this and we cup of coffee going what? Oh, when was the last? I was thinking, <laughs> what could it be? What have I been consuming all week that has been could be giving me the shit? I just don't. No idea. Then it dawned on me the one thing I've been consistently doing all week, other than just being a scumbag, uh, was drinking coffee. So I was like, I better inspect. Yeah, I had some fasty beans. <laughs> oh, yeah, I pulled the beans out. I was no. like, I smelt them, and I was like. Oh, that smells a bit, you know, like cow cake when it goes that sort of fausty smell. There We've got co- palacin on it, it'd be yeah, fine. There were a couple of great ones in there. I was like, oh, oh shit, they were cheap. This is why instant's better for you. They were cheap ones as well. I was yeah. in, I was just doing a sh- the weekly shot and I just grab those. Usually I order them online, but yeah, so that was that. that and they've gone out well, I that don't, quickly. I, no, I don't really know. It must, I think, 
but I don't know, stored him. You're prop- supposed to be a professional, yeah? Stored him properly, too old. I don't fucking know. Probably they they probably just rattled the thing, got the all the ones that stuck around the edge and grounded them up, I expect. <laughs> but yeah, so Empty the coffee machine out, and uh, all is well back in the. Yeah, uh, funny, huh? Back in the bathroom. You, you're like determined to kill yourself, aren't you? Well, it's like, nothing like a good clear out. I, th- I think. I'm, uh, yeah, it's, you, it's, it's hideous, Marlon. <laughs> it's hideous. He it does it a week it just, too late. It's like being in a uh, well gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there, and think, oh my god. <laughs> You know, it's getting bad when uh, dad's partner is leaving, like, neutral uh, <laughs> soul, like, new, odor neutralizer in there. And I'm yeah. like, hmm, cool. I, think some, out. I think someone's dropping hints. Don't know what they're, who they're for. Ain't me. Anyway, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's been my week. Just, uh, yeah, fairly easy work, week at work. So not too bad. What about, what about you, dad? How's, how's, how's your week been for you? Uh, yeah. Been all, all right. right. Yeah. yeah. We got on all right, haven't we? Yeah, I think. I always get on all right when I turn up on time. Well, better than what we used to a few years ago. We get on quite well, I think, now. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But week's been all right, though. Not not, not too much on, is it, really? Been fairly quiet on the on the yard. Just sort of ticking over. Bit of bumming around. Yeah, but proper beef farmers, didn't we? <laughs> Don't start till the mid-morning, finish up by the early afternoon. We're done. <laughs> He does. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, he's been pretty good lately. Yeah. You've been, um, how's it, how's it been getting the V8 out of storage? Blowing that down to, uh, down to the uh, holiday that's, cottage. That's fine, because there's no cameras, is there, going down there? <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Alle- yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. 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 No. Good. Good week, then. Um, right, shall we start off? Uh, I, 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 I don't want to do the guest questions. I don't want to do the guest questions because I forgot to tell the old man uh, about the guest questions, so he won't have What's the guest questions? The uh, guest questions. Uh, go-to drink, what, What's your go-to drink? What, in general? Yeah, just in general. When you're in a pub, what are you ordering? Or, what's your favourite drink? Guest ale. Ge- a guest ale? Yeah. What's that like? Pot, was it down there? Pot-oler, potholer. Cheeky Monkey. It's, Bitter just, Bully. Oh, you were, you, you were a Guinness. Atlantic. You were a Guinness man for years. Oh, for 15 years. Years, yeah, years. That's yeah. yeah I drank Guinness drinking. all the time. But then what happened? Matured, I think. I got oh, really? Oh, <laughs> You are you're in the next stage of old miserable bastard yeah, now. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were starting off on like who? No, I get really bad. I get on the gin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you on the gin? And nothing really? wrong with a bit of gin. Oh god, I can't stand it. Dry or you drink thing. it? Yeah, he does. Yeah, you I, don't? No, fuck me. No, and whiskey or um, whiskey or right, a bit more rum these days. Like mule. Turn, I can't stand whiskey. Turn into a pirate. Oh, I like jo- Johnny Walker. I drink anything. I don't mind. I know. Part. I see you're recycling. <laughs> you do drink anything. <laughs> Stella, Carlsberg. Oh no, that's Matthew. Petrol. Matthew drinks a Stella. Oh right. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> that's too far. That <laughs> that's a bridge too far. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll ask. Oh, go on and go on and. Um, what what's the most mental thing to happen to you or that you've done on a night out? Can you think anything that stands out? College or away with the boys in Prague. Um. And well, it, just stag like, night, I went and Miss Millie's with nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> You're a stag night? Yeah. Where the fuck was this? There's Nigel Perkins chucked all my clothes out the bloody <laughs> roof like the <laughs> coat. <laughs> what the fuck? And then I, uh, Dean, Dean gives me his waistcoat to cover me up. I think, well, that's not going to do anything, is it, Dean? <laughs> Is it Bristol? Yeah, Miss Millie's as you're pulling out, isn't it? <laughs> oh, on the, on the left hand side. On the yeah. left hand side on the way out there. Still it? there. I yeah, saw it the other next day. To the Turkish barber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckers. No, I didn't think you'd come out the gate with that one. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, all right, got it, got it. Marlon, do you want to ask the next one? No. No, I won't ask no. the next one either. Oh, what's you... the next one? Uh, next Don't worry one, about well, it. I could probably answer it for him, but it's uh, what's your favourite category on Pornhub? What? What's your favourite category on Pornhub? I don't go on Pornhub. No? No, no. Dad likes big titty milfs. That's all I know. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, Dad, yeah. Um, oh, we thought we'd get you on because it's long been asked on the uh, on our little Discord chat room. People have been asking to have you on and people have suggested, get Reg's old man on because I think they've heard many a tale that I've told about generally me and you at work and the stuff that we get up to and... 
I've spoken about you in quite a good light, I think, and I've always said that you. Well, I don't know. I haven't listened to it. So, well, no, I'm telling you. That's well, why. I <laughs> I've listened to bits, but not all of it. Um, yeah, to uh, the fact that you're, um, you know, quite interested in what you've done in the last, uh, what God, what thirty odd years. Um, yeah, so I think we'll just we'll start. I think is it? Um, uh, it's what James English says. I'll hey, we'll start at the very beginning. Um, what is your your early life, Dad? Sort of school. Um, Binnegar Primary School. Binnegar Primary School. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Used to water school then. Yeah? Well, it's not yeah. too far, was it? Surely. Well, I know, but five or six-year-olds don't walk to school anymore. Oh, what? You walk to school on your own? Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that. No, no danger announcers? No. No. No, no Jimmy Savills or anything like that. <laughs> oh, you must better not do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've said a lot worse. Don't worry. <laughs> No, yeah, I used to walk to school. It was about half a mile at the road, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, from what I remember mum telling me, you sort of struggled a bit academically in the early years. Is that right? Yeah, I couldn't read or write until I was nine, ten. Really? Yeah. Is it, was, it, was it just something that they weren't keeping up with? or you just, you In know? those days, you didn't fit in the peg. And that was it? They just, mo- they just moved on without you? Yeah, we had lessons and all that, and it didn't work. So father... Uh, ex head teacher, funny enough, called Mrs. Emery, <laughs> just down from the farm. I went down there for an hour every night for a year, and she got me up to speed within twelve months. What caught up? Yeah, I I, caught right up. I didn't suppose you were, they weren't put labels on labels on no, stuff back no. then, like or anything, no. like so they wouldn't know. You, didn't you, get, you. you got some special help, but it was useless. Yeah, and so you caught up in a year, like because you yeah. Said, yeah. My remember was my mum telling me you couldn't read or write until you were nearly ten. Yeah, a friend of mine, Mark. We were in the same same job, and he had he ran a, ran his own business. He only lives down the road from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't really think it's impeded you, is it? Really? No, no. I'm not very good at English, but I'm good at m- no. Neither am I. I'm not arithmetic. Yeah. yeah, I'm very good at arithmetic. If you ought to see him figuring out cattle numbers in his head, it's like watching fucking Rain Man. Hi, <laughs> 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 right, twenty-one, twenty. My boy's wicked smart. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, what was it? You went to you went to Binnegar Primary and then uh, secondary. Where was no, that? No, I went to Binnegar Primary and then, uh, unfortunately, grandfather. No, no. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to think now. No, grandfather died, so they sold the land. Yeah. And uh, Uncle Richard and father got out of the farm, and we stayed there for another two years. Yeah. So then we moved. When I was still at Binnegar Primary, I was meant to go to Whitston School. Oh, really? So then I went to Froome, uh, lived at Butland Didham. We went to Selwood Middle School, joined right in the middle. Yeah, I know, yeah. I hated it. <laughs> Got to Froome College, once a bad. And the best year of my school life was the fifth year, the last year. Were you on, um, were you on YTS back then or not? No, no. No, I didn't do YTS. YTS was about YTS? Youth, youth training, training scheme. scheme. You, remember, you remember the kids that used 25 to 25 pound a week. Remember the kids that used Five to go to Strode? Yes. To do like mechanics and bricklaying yeah, and, and stuff. Because they didn't go on so well at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that they were fucking stupid, but they were just like, you know, what's it, the point in them? What's the point in teaching them English when they really want to be turning fucking yeah. wrenches? Yeah. Um, yeah, you, so when I, yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, did you know what you wanted to do? I sort always of, knew what I wanted what to you do, wanted, be a farmer. That was it. There was yeah. no d- deviation no, in that plan. No, 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 no. So natural progression was. Straight from school to Cannington, I assume. Or did you have a Did you have a year out or not? Year out? No, not a year out, but like a year at work or anything. Because some people went and worked for a year. Oh then, yeah, like yeah. Before you go to Cannington in those days, you had to do two years on farms. Oh really? So before Whereas, you even start, yeah, you had to have some background. That's yeah, a- you had to do. Uh, I had. A, I did a year on a pig farm, and I thought I was going to go to college, and they said no. You got because it was dairy pred- Another year. predominantly. So I had to do a year on a dairy farm. So I had to right. go milk and cows for a year. So when I went to college, I was 18. Not like Thomas. He left school and went straight, straight to in, yeah. college, didn't he? Yeah. I so, think that's a better way around of doing it, really, how you did it. Because it you, gives you a it, bit of experience. And when you get to college, you're 18, you can do what you want, man. There you're were a not, few knobheads on my course it, that wouldn't know what... Locked what, up. They exactly. tried to fucking milk the ball. And uh, <laughs> it... <laughs> 
<laughs> it affirms kind of what you want to do as well, doesn't it? There's no time wasting. That's it. You yeah, spent it, two years yeah. hands on doing know. something. But is there a lot of people that want to take 16 year olds out straight out of school on mm, farm? No. Because, well, I don't, I, I don't know. I think it's a good way of doing it. I know that people did do it, definitely. And there was apprenticeship schemes as well when I was there that you know, the apprentices that would be like, they do like block release. So they do like five weeks on farm, then a week at school, yeah. um, at, at college, which worked quite well as well. But yeah. So what was um what was college like? So you obviously stayed there. Was that a bit of a shock? Oh, best year of my life. That was. <laughs> Mother said that as well. Sure, best year of my life. Yeah, that was a crack. That was away from home for the first so, time. Well, we at eighteen, kind yeah. of doing whatever the fuck you wanted to. Yeah, father paying for board and lodging. That's all right. Yeah, you were uh, you were in Jeans Hall, weren't you? Is that no, right? no, no, I was in the old block, Griffin, Griffin Wing, down the bottom. Down the bottom. That's They'd probably want there. Is that the Walled Gardens? Yeah, right in there. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple of those down there when I left. Yeah, I can't remember which ones were there, but yeah, fucking hell. So, what do you think? Did you learn a lot out of college, or was it more? Uh, Met a lot of useful people. I think that's more the case, isn't it? Like I did. I just passed. I didn't get a credit. I just passed it. Yeah. So I want to be a big pig farmer. Always wanted to be a pig farmer. Well, because I did pigs when I was thirteen, didn't I? Uh, Park, um, when I was at, at weekends, when I was at school. At the place um, local to us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you um, do you think you learned more from that chap on the pig farm than you did at college? Yeah, I learned a lot of him. Because in- running pigs, you've got to be very efficient. And he taught me a lot. Well, you've always said in pigs, you've got to be really efficient to make fuck all money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. That was a, um, what what sort of pig farm was it? Uh, 500 sales to bacon. All the way to bacon? Yeah. Quite an interesting guy, wasn't he? Because I remember you telling me that he he got pissed off with the price of feed. <laughs> so he built his own mill yeah. <laughs> to make his own feed. Yeah, we made our own feed. <laughs> Cubed it a lot. That, that's like you getting pissed off with the price of petrol. <laughs> so building your own fucking <laughs> refinery out the back. <laughs> well, that's right. The three, well, then five, he knew what was first. going in his feed, look. Yeah. Yeah. No bullshit. Not no getting, crap. No he, sh- he, he, you know. Bought all the raw materials it. himself, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Soya, wheat, barley, everything. Yeah. So once you've, you obviously, do, you've done college at this point, um, and then you're out into the, uh, out into the big rock, wide world of work again. What was, what were your movements after college? Oh, I worked at the pig farm again. Yeah. For a year. And then after that, uh, Bibby's offered me a job selling feed. So I thought I'd give that a go for a year. It won't me. And I got out of that after a year and went back pig farming. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Um, do you think, what, what What was it just to try it, just to see if you liked yeah, it? Yeah, I was only, what, 19 when I did that. Yeah. That's yeah. a, that takes a different... Uh, 19, 20, something like that. Yeah. I can't imagine there being a worse job, to be honest. You have to rock up... Cold at, calling. R- yeah, knocking up, rocking up at farmers' that, doors. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Trying, yeah. To sell, trying to sell them feed. Yeah, and you can fuck off. Yeah. That's, everyone's usually got their fucking... They gave me an area, and Bibby, uh, the feed company, weren't in that area, really. Only a half a dozen, but that was done by another chap. And it was just cold calling. <laughs> you're, you're basically, you've got your area, somebody else's patch for another firm. Oh, I got my patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a, cu- a few Bibby customers But there. not a lot. Not a lot. Do you got to try? I wasn't allowed to call on them. So, because he had a bigger area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do your nonsense. So, yeah, I did quite well. <laughs> I couldn't fucking do no. that. No. I always I, I feel for the fuckers that turn up at my place trying to sell me double glazing. I'm like, no, I'm fucking not interested, mate. You're all the best. That's, That's a, like Jehovah's Witness, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, the, the the smart technology now. I thank fuck. I've got a fucking UV doorbell, so you can see who it is. <laughs> oh, it's the Jehovah. <laughs> Jehovah's are back again. <laughs> Turned up white shirts on bicycles. Nah, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Press the uh, screaming evil witch button. <laughs> so you went back. Um, like you say you went back pig farming again. Yep. Mate, your your boss happy to take you back, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that. Yeah. How many more years did you do that for then? Uh, a year or two, I think. Until I was about nearly twenty-two. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then what? Um, you met mum in this in this time then? Oh yeah, we were. I was going out with your mother then. You met at college, didn't you? But you we weren't. Met, to- no, we weren't together. But then we got together. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I. <laughs> it always makes me laugh because you and mother are just when when you look at it from from outward perspective, two very different people. Like you are gun ho, work, 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 and not to say mother wasn't, but mother more airy fairy. You know, she loved. always followed me. Didn't she ever? I know. That's what I always think. She never, never, never questioning was mother. Never questioned it. No. I always thought it was not like, no, it was a bad parent, but I always thought it was a, it was an odd parent because, you know, mum was always, you know, rock and roll and, you know, but I suppose you had the shared interest in obviously farming, but, and also bikes as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Because she had a, what did she have? A little YB100, didn't she? Yeah, YB100. And you had a, what was it? What did you have first? The DT175 or the RD350? No, DT175. Oh. MX. Yeah. Still, still got it. Derby. Still got it. I shan't sell that one. He sold the RD. I couldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, but I'd never had it from a kid. <laughs> oh, didn't you? No. Hey, when would you have was that one? Was it an RD? 350 LC. 1990, that was. So Yellow? That. No. White. White. White with White. red stripe. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Stunning looking bike. Mm. Yeah. So what was the, uh, so how did, obviously that came about, you met mum. Yeah. And were you like, look, this is the plan. This is what I want to do. This is, because you lived in, you, or you moved in with mum and you lived in Froome together, didn't you? Yeah, we bought a house. Yeah. But prior to that, she worked on a pig farm. Did she? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was working with calves. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then someone said, does Justin want a job? I said, Look, I'm going into pig farming. Do you want to do this or not? Because it'd be good training. <laughs> Keen or no? So she did it. Yeah. yeah. Did it for a year. And then then my godfather rang me up and said, uh, do you want to run a pig farm? Manage a pig farm? He said, how old were you? Uh, nearly 22. Fuck. That's a lot, lot of responsibility, isn't it? If you'd seen the farm and what I remember it to be, that's a lot of responsibility at 22. Yeah. And that was 500 saves outside. I was, I've always told this story on the show of on the ADAS map, there was a big black, big back splodge and it says, There is. Do not rear outdoor pigs in this area. And that's where dad reared outdoor pigs. <laughs> yeah, we did it from 88 to 2001. Two. Yeah. What was the... Um, Fucking hell. So, uh, am I right in saying you went on like a six-week training course or something? Or like a, like... a one-week training course. Oh, one week. Well, yeah. Yeah. On outdoor pigs. Well, oh, I've, I've done <laughs> indoor pigs. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Right, you're going to be a mechanic now. There's a one-week course. Um, ta-da. Yeah. You're going to be working on McLarens. There you go. Yeah. Right, all the best. See you later. <laughs> See you when they're built. <laughs> no, yeah. Got there and they sent... Before I started, I went down to Devon... Stayed with someone I knew, and we I worked on an outdoor pig unit for one week. For one week? I always inter- done indoors. Indoors pigs. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a totally so it's different... the indoor pig setup similar to the indoor calf setup like you were doing? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, well, it's similar. Inside in pens. Yeah, it's it's more controlled, whereas outdoors is a lot more labour intensive. Wild. As a, it, yeah, it's... it's it, but it's well, not, when I said it's labour intensive, you don't... Haven't got the shit, have you? Pardon? Well, oh no, no. Sorry. I mean labor intensive as in you said to me, if I was still outdoor pig farming now, I'd be in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> well, I probably would be. Yeah. Hips would be worn out, knees would be worn That's out. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's just harder on your body, isn't it? Yeah. Especially with all the mud. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's dirty cunts, aren't they? It's it's yeah, it's wild. It's like it's the difference between like indoor beef farming and cattle ranching. Do you know what I mean? Like that that yeah, that's the only that, comparison yeah. I can sort of. Oh, give you it. no, you're a cowboy, isn't he? Kind of. It's a cow, he's a cowboy <laughs> that thinks I'm a cowboy that thinks he's a mechanic and he's a mechanic that thinks I he's know, a cowboy. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so what was that like? Getting thrown in at a deep end. Like we I think we spoke about it earlier in the week. Yeah, we did actually. If anything happened to me, you'd learn it pretty quick, wouldn't you? It was just sink or swim. Well, yeah. you know how to do it. It's just all yeah, the paperwork side and the finance. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, yeah, it's the bit in the office I don't have a fucking clue about. Put Numbers me out, and stuff. Put me out on the things. yard. I'm happy as Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but when you're thrown at the deep end, you someone said, you know, I was there for about two months, and then someone said to me, the boss said to me, "You ready for this?" 
I'm going to sack the manager. <laughs> <laughs> then I, oh, okay. I worked under the manager, look. That so, was the chat that was down in the farmhouse? No, in the bungalow. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So I learned the ropes. Yeah. How it roughly worked. Yeah, and then just... And then I did my own thing. And he said, are you ready? I said, let's get on with it then. <laughs> So yeah, go six and five hundred acre farm with five hundred sows. So, was it a really steep learning curve? Yeah. <laughs> do you make any? Do you make any mis- like big mistakes that you can remember? Or, mm. but you learn. Yeah, yeah. Like you make mistakes. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, make mistakes. But you don't make mistakes. You don't learn from them. You don't. Yeah, you don't become. It's like now what you're trying to do. You think I made a mistake there? That ain't gonna happen again. It makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah. And you make more money. Yeah. You think, no, I ain't doing that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't make mistakes in life, you're not going to learn a lot. No. 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 Um, Obviously, mum was working, mum worked with you. Yeah, yeah. The whole time. Yeah, the whole time. Until she had you and Gabrielle. Yeah. And she still did a bit. I was going to say, it's not like she stopped, I don't think, was it really? The reason that I turned up was because mum got tackled by a sow or something. Is that right? Oh, yeah. You were overdue by about 10 days. And I... Mother's out in the field, mind. Full, yeah, fully, fully in cat. <laughs> and then I, well, Sunday afternoon it was in the winter. Uh, yeah, it would have been about no, March time. Yeah, no, no, about this time. No, I was born in November. So, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, nine months on from uh, Valentine's Day. Weirdly enough, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Nine months after Father's Day. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, no one else was about. I was unloading these saves, gilts, whatever. And I said, give me a hand. And save me getting out of the track. I said, oh, undo the gates. <laughs> so she hadn't did the gates on the sail loader, and the, the sail went straight between her legs. And bye. <laughs> straight up over the hill. You were born one, two days later. And our gran was always like, oh, definitely the apple pie I baked her. I think that was what, that's what, <laughs> that's what hurried it along. Dab's like, well, fuck, fuck, boss. <laughs> uh, what's, what was it like um, working with your wife then? Because I, you know. I, I didn't work with her. <laughs> <laughs> Not very often. She, were, did the, she did the wieners, though. I did the says. Oh, you think, do you think that was what, because I always remember telling me when you were working on the pigs, like working with you could be difficult at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do you think that's the that's what made you a good manager? Because not to say you didn't take no shit, but you were just like get on with a job. I probably want the best manager. But well, yeah, but you say best manager. What to staff in that? Yeah. Do you mean? Yeah, but most of them knew what they had to do every day, so I didn't. I didn't speak to them in the morning. They knew what they had to do. Yeah, you don't have to get involved. No, too much because I'm on a morning person. I didn't speak to him till about ten o'clock. <laughs> well, I have to speak later. to him at about seven o'clock. Or ring him up. Where the fuck oh, are you? Fuck. No, that's too much. That's too much. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm alright in the morning on my own. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, go in, cup of coffee. I know what I'm you supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, get on with it yeah. until you get 11, 10, 11 o'clock. If you warmed up, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. He's better than me because I don't work like working with no cunt. I am I am most happy working on my own. And that's not because I don't like people. And that's not that's because I don't lie. like the people I work with. That's just because I am most content working on my own always. I don't know what it is. I'm just like... Oh, you I'm, can rely on yourself. You know where you've got to be. You know what you got to do. I answer to me when I'm working on my own. Like, if I make a fuck up, I'm the one that's got to fix it. Whereas if, like, I make a fuck up and I'm with dad, it's like, oh, fuck it out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so how many years did you do that for I, I doing the outdoor pigs oh, after foot and mouth I think oh yeah totally 2001 2002 yeah because we were breeding stock for resale yeah breeding stock so that buggered that up so we then we um, the sales went and I was sort of a partnership with a the boss yeah for I don't know a few years eight nine yeah yeah that's what we did yeah what was foot and mouth like because i was too young to i you know what was oh, i hideous eight i didn't really it was 2001 wasn't it? i don't really remember it we had pigs on either side of these roads and you weren't meant to move them 
What, well, you weren't allowed like, to move them like across on the, the road? road. Right. <laughs> so we'd have people up on the cliff, up the other road. Any cars come in? No, right, move them. <laughs> <laughs> it never they got... They were in trailers, but you weren't even meant to do that. Really? Yeah. That's but, moving them on your own land. Yeah. The f- but you had to go on the lane. You weren't even meant to take them on the bloody lane. The farm was, if you'd imagine it, the farm was situated on a crossroads. On a crossroads. Right. So there, are, there were... Fields, both three, sides. Three, so, three, three corners of the... Three corners of it were was um, the land that Dad was managing, so he had to try and get them across like three fucking roads. <laughs> yeah, we never got foot and mouth, never got down no. as far as off, did it? But you were putting a. But well, they did bring them out to burn them up at Yorkster, look, on the firing range. What? Oh no, that one. No, no, they didn't do that. That was BSE, I think. Oh, it was oh BSE was up there? Yeah, they did. No, they brought them out to Yorkster to burn them. They want the foot and mouth. They brought out to burn actually. But you were in a category where you were allowed pigs in, but you weren't allowed pigs out. Was that right? No, so, we weren't allowed in or out. All we could do was send out to our own to the own the the finishing unit. Oh, I see. Had to get a special license because we we're getting these pigs don't stop producing. Yeah, they're still producing. Yeah, and we have pigs everywhere. I remember you had... And we had to get him out. And you being his you, he, he, he was the first one to get a license to move pigs. Yeah. And they went straight into his own finishing unit, look, mm. out the road. Um, so obviously you're, you're running the pig farm with mother and all the staff and all that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I don't... It's up to you whether you want to talk about it, but you were on... Um, you were on quite a good scheme where obviously you had a house with the a house with the job. Yeah. Which left, you know, you had you've got two incomes, yours and mother's. Yeah. Which, you know, you're able to invest your money in. So you went and bought how many houses? Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Marlon looking. I at already have one. Yeah, the then one that you lived two in. More, yeah. 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 Which, which obviously plays your advantage later on. Um because when um and when did you when did you, the pet pigs will start, all of the outdoor pigs start to finish up when the money dropped out of it? Yeah, in 2001 too. 2001 yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Why did all the money drop out of it? Ask him, not me. Well, because what we were doing, we were producing breeding stock for other farmers. And that went, and that was the bonus in the job. Right. Producing, we did about five to six thousand breeding females a year. Shit. And of, out of and about 24,000 pigs. Did they just stop buying them, or did they start? Yeah, it changes. Pe- a lot of people started to buy the grandparent stock and start breeding on their own farms. Stop disease coming in, and this yeah. that, and the other. So it dried up a bit, and doing that was the bonus. Doing the breeding stock, yeah, you know, Everything five or six, five or six thousand went out for breeding stock, and the other eighteen thousand went in the finishing unit. And yeah. then when that dried up. Um, you decided to take on the farm yourself then? Yeah, and a sort of a partnership with uh, my ex-boss, like. Yeah. Yeah, so we did that for a few years. Yeah. And while well, while you were doing that, um, obviously me and me and Gabriel were, oh, where old were we then? We'd have been about 10 and 8, something like that. Yeah. 2003, I was born in 93, so I'd have been, yeah. Like, yeah, sort of 10, 3, 7, whatever. And, um, yeah, you went on from that, and then you decided to expand your little little empire. Some why well, say empire, but you went on and uh, went on and rented another farm, didn't you? Yeah, we're King. Yeah, we're King Dane Water Lane Farm, and then you managed. And I did two stints at shooters, two crops, so finishing pigs. And that was just to clarify. That was you and Mum. Yeah, with three pig farms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then do you look was, back on it and think, how the fuck do I do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're younger then, are you? Just, just work, work, work. Do work. it. Like, Get on. Didn't even have me look. How the fuck? I know. How did he cope? There was a time where I wasn't working for him. What a load Madness. of fun. I don't know how he ever coped, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> did you always have the thing, thing in your head, I'm going to have my own farm? Yep. That was always that, the, the end goal. That was always from day one. Not red one. I want my own. Yeah. You, you were always going to have one. Yeah. Did you... Did you ever think it was going to be feasible, or was it was it, uh, a, it was it always set as like you wanted your own pig farm or? Well, yeah, it was my own pig farm, but um, 
I always wanted my own farm. But I didn't know I was going to do what I did then. No. Was it, yeah, what I'm getting at, was it, was this like a, I would, li- I'd like my own farm. Or yeah. I'm, I'm going to get my own farm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see. Um, 2006 then. What happened there? Well, his land came up for sale, didn't it? So, uh, so we had a look at it and decided we'd have a go for it. How did that, how did all that come to be then? Because obviously you see it, it's obviously, what, right down the road from where you grew up pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Nothing village. on it, just just fields. Oh, 105 no. acres of grass. <laughs> Fuck all. That's, two, a, that's two, a lot of mowing. <laughs> two falling down sheds, one falling down make, uh, milk and bale, and fuck all else. Yeah. <laughs> How did what? What was the conversation like with mum then? In what were you like? Look, I found this. This what? Because I knew you've been to go look at a couple farms before, if I remember rightly. And none yeah, of them we've really been look- looking. We've been looking, but they're too expensive. We couldn't afford to buy a already made farm. <laughs> fuck it, I'll do it myself. I've built it myself. <laughs> Follows to it. <laughs> um, so, obviously, I mean, not want to drill too deep down into it, but financial-wise, it, um, it was all or nothing, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I moved banks to do it. Yeah. Because the HSBC wouldn't give me the money, or not enough. Went to another bank, they gave me the money. And then uh, when I told her what I paid for it, she actually agreed to give me that money. <laughs> I said, I'll be all right with it. <laughs> and she drove around the yard at King Dane and go, yeah, be fine. <laughs> you wouldn't do that now? No, no. fuck me, no. I it, said, it was a bit over what I told her I was going to, and I just thought, well, I'm going to go for this. She sold. And when you buy things at auction, you have 28 days, 30 days. You put your deposit 10%. Your funds. 10% deposit down. On the night? Yeah. <laughs> Your mother wrote a check out. And uh, uh, 28 days, 30 days later, you have to pay in full. If you don't, you lose your deposit. Shit. So did you, had you sold both the houses? No, I sold one. You sold one with the vision to sell one more. And sold me ISIS. Oh, what, everything? Cashed it in. You literally, so you were, I remember things were tight. I remember that. I remember I was quite young. Tight for a long time. I was quite young, but I didn't, I did realise, I remember mum saying to me a couple of times, like, oh, money's tight at the moment. And I was like, oh, right. I was like, I know it sounds a bit privileged, but I'd never, never realised that and never heard that before. Because when you're young, you just assume that there's always money in the bank. Yeah, that's it. There's always food on the table. I always get my Christmas presents. You always get your mobile phone. Well, that's it. We, at that kind of age, are completely oblivious to everything else. Yeah. And then looking back with a bit of perspective, you're like, fuck, we were, yeah, not quite uh, sugar sandwiches, but I think it was probably getting down there a few times. Um, So how, (laughs) so you win the auction for the the land. Um, Hey, top dollar. Wow. At the top, top dollar. At the time, everyone told everyone said you were fucking daft, didn't they? Yeah, said I was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember mum saying that she had to write a check out because your hands were shaking so much. <laughs> she did write a check <laughs> yeah, out. She did. Right? You had to take. You had to take the accountant. Uh, our accountant at the time. Yeah, he took a stainer. Because uh, yeah, he, he, mum said he's there to stop your old man putting his hand up too far. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You get it though. You get auction yeah. fever, don't you? Oh you yeah. Get away. Yeah. No, I can understand it. Um, and what was the? Obviously, you had the, we had the land, um, when we were still living in the farmhouse, and obviously you were still running the pig, the two, three pig farms at the time. Um, and how did I want to? I want to know how the conversation went with Mum, of uh, oh, I know you really like this six bedroom farmhouse, Justine, but uh. <laughs> We're going to have to move to where, Mark? Well, we're going to buy a caravan off an old fucking holiday park yeah. for free grand. <laughs> and we're going to go live in that for four years. How did that conversation go? Well, she said, I'm not living in a caravan. I thought, well, you ain't got a lot of choice. We can't afford a log cabin. So we bought a caravan. <laughs> Tom that ended up in his touring caravan. Yeah. I know we hear about it a lot. <laughs> so I think he got a bit of grief at school and they're probably thinking, oh. I ain't done so bad after all, have they? Oh, yeah. I used Called to, him Pikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to get some shoes. I did feel a bit bad about that. Kids at school ripping into you and the Gabrielle. Yeah, but, it, you know, 
Oh, it toughens you up, doesn't it? Like same at college, you used to get the same stick at college, but it just, it, you know, as long, as long as you can see it through, it just hardened you up. Mm. And mm. I, never, I never got it that bad. I never got it that bad that it was horrendous, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I remember you and mum having the, you, to be fair to you and mum, I remember mum having the conversation with me saying, look, we can have a static caravan with three bedrooms, but there'll be a lot less living space. And obviously you're a teenager. You don't want to be living under our feet and, you know, you don't want to be, so we'll buy your own little touring caravan. And yeah, so then I had my little Compass Commodore 400. Yeah. What honey. It was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was fucking. <laughs> one night, one night it went boom. Oh God, what's happened? Tire blew out. So Tom was sleeping on the Titanic for the last 18 months. <laughs> Jack, <laughs> no, I, I, let you go. No, I went out the same night and stuck a knife in the other tire to level the cunt out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you going, what have you bloody done that for? Or a fucking good tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you, how did you find it? Living in the caravan, because, you know, obviously I, I knew what well, They were good days, I think. I think they were, long term. It was a struggle, I think, and it was a fucking That's big... it, the winter must have been oh. shit. Yeah, well, they all left me one winter when the toothpaste froze. <laughs> they all went into your grands. We did, yeah, yeah. We went. I, think I was we left went, there on my own. We went there, I, was, I think it was like one week or one weekend, yeah, we went down to, went down to the grandparents. We couldn't hack it anymore. You look uh, at the freezing, temp uh, yep. freezing temperature of toothpaste. Oh, God. It was, um, I remember it was, the, it was minus 14. That was that winter that it got. We had the worst two winters the first two years we were there. It was, yeah. Hideous. I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, I think oh, great. After the first. Um, oh, it's not, it, yeah. Toothpaste doesn't freeze that. No? No, it's not that bad. It's like minus three to minus five. Oh, uh, right. But it got to, I remember it got to minus 14. It was when the, it was when the toilet water froze. That's when it started to get a little bit. Piss outside then. <laughs> I did. My fucking fields. mother used to complain that she used to cuss me. She says, you got to stop swinging that top door open, Thomas, and pissing out the door. It's starting, to smell, <laughs> like, starting to smell like a urinal out here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you are disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that, do you think, I think it didn't take long until the, um, until the novelty wore off. It felt like a holiday for about two weeks. And then it was like, oh, we usually go home now. <laughs> when do we get to go back to the house? <laughs> oh, you don't. We're here forever. How long were you in the caravans? Four years. Yeah. That's, that's a matter of time, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was worth it. It's all been worth it. But if it hadn't worked, it wouldn't have been fucking worth it, would it? But no. Yeah, and luckily it, 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 it did. I remember the day you put your foot through the fucking bathroom floor. <laughs> <laughs> the Alkafine pipe had burst underneath. Oh, he'd spray water. Oh, yeah. He'd spray water under the MDF Can, floor. And that's that's just bloody his chipboard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OSB. Right. Dad just put his foot straight through the fucking caravan floor. No, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they used to, I remember it got so cold that you and mum had... I had my grandfather a sleeping bag that he took up Kilimanjaro. He was good down to minus 20. <laughs> and then you and mum had um, warm backs, onesies. Yeah, I couldn't wear them though, could I? Oh yeah, because you're allergic to... Um, neoprene, neoprene on the zip. Oh, that's right, yeah. And they had like these cave-in, um, what you wear under Under the, your wetsuit. Under a wetsuit. Like, dry suit. Yeah. Right. Dry suit, that's it. It was like an insulated layer. <laughs> Mr. Warmback made him for us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it was um it was it was tough times. I think mum it was all it was all alright. We all got used to it. And then um it's hard to describe. So we we ended up so well you oh, you tell the story, Dad. I mean What's that? we you built one shed, didn't you? Built one shed. And then uh, we moved then we moved up there, didn't we? Yeah, with the calves in there. And yeah. We moved shortly after. When did the pigs to calves come about? Then? Oh, sorry, yeah. When did we you? We were still doing the pigs. Yeah, it was sort of a but you decided you wanted two to units do then calves. Well, well, no. Well, yeah. The reason being is that what? <laughs> well, what was the reason you did calves, Dad? Because if you weren't planning for a house, yeah, calves are in that uh, criteria. Yeah, not ah. pigs, not what? rearing pigs. It was sheep or pigs, and he goes, "Well, I'm not being a fucking shepherd." <laughs> <laughs> so we did calves. And yeah. What was the what was the aside from that when you told mum we're gonna go doing calves? That uh, wasn't a problem. No, it wasn't. And Until I started feeding them. Well, no, and then you said to 
she goes, oh, right, have you uh, got any experience with calves then, Mark? Said, well, no, you you did some calf rearing like 20 years ago. She's like, yeah, 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did a few more than that. It wasn't that long ago, was it? Yeah. Um. So yeah, what was the what was the progression from there? We're obviously still living in the caravan. Started as one shed. Well, we go from 160 calves in the first 12 months. We go to 500. Yeah. And next year we went to 900. And then um, we stayed at 900 for quite a while, I think. Yeah. We? And um, well, yeah. We so you popped up a few more sheds. Yeah, pretty, pretty quick. Thing. Yeah. By 2010, we had six sheds up. One well, shed all- was a straw barn. The other five raw calves. What was the what was the idea behind that? Um, it was for planning reasons, wasn't it? Uh, doing the calves? Yeah, no, no for um, no planning reasons. I to get the house. That's the reason you expanded it so fast. Well, no, not really. We were good at it. Well, no, I thought it was because you had to. Um, the the farm obviously had to service the. Oh, load. you had to get it big enough to build a big enough house. Uh, the yeah. Warren if you, building if, the house. If you don't have a very big turnover or profit margin. You just get to build a little two-bedroom bungalow, don't you? Yeah. So I thought, if this all goes wrong, I'm going to expand the business. Hopefully it'll go well, and we can build the maximum size you can for owner-manager. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> he did, Lord. <laughs> and if it goes wrong, at least you've got something to say, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. That was the idea. So, yeah, it and went the well, only, we're still there. Yeah, and the only safety net you had was the one house that you kept, wasn't it? Yeah, still got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that would have been a bit. That would have been another um, upstick from the caravan to Froome. Don't know if that's a downgrade. Well, it would have been back then. Not yeah. so much now. A bit of an upgrade <laughs> yeah, now. But in those days, you just go to the bank manager and say, "I need another hundred grand." You go, "Yeah, fine. Here, I'm Mark. Get on with it." Now, things a different attitude altogether. It, yeah, it's a completely different economy, isn't it? I think it's not. Yeah, and it's the just bank the manager said, oh, "I've tape. got to fill all the forums in." It goes a hierarchy. Yeah, there's no personal touch. No, all the bank managers then. Yeah, it's fine. That's it. They know you. They know you're good for it. Yeah. Yeah. Now everyth- everything is. It's changed now. Yeah. Totally changed. Mm. Yeah. Right. We're going to get back into this in a minute. But before that, I'm going to cut to a short break. But before that, as well, a massive shout out to our sponsor, The Auto Mover. <laughs> Marlon, I, uh, I've been doing some miles recently and I've been uh, paying attention to what's been going on on the road. Um, and uh, I have seen no end of those alley. Those alley v- flatbed chassis cab vans knocking around. With- Overloaded the fuck. Oh my God. And you think these these are the people that the that, that your bloody dealers and second-hand car yeah. people are hiring to move the thing that you've paid God knows what for. That's it. Hugely overweight. So that means when they get tugged or when they crash... They ain't insured. That's the thing. And when you're when your man in the dealer in the second hand car dealership goes, Do you need it delivered? Don't worry, we've got we've got a bloke that do that. Well, he's a you know good good rate. And you think, oh that's all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, the rate probably isn't that good. Second of all, your car's being barely ratchet strapped down to some Peugeot master that's twenty years old and the alley bed's bent to hell. I think, I think you just made that car up. What? Per, what is it? What's it? No, it's a Renault master. Oh god, heavens forbid. Renault master. I saw Come one the on. other day that had dents in the back of the cab. Where a car had ro- obviously rolled forward into it. So, and these are all the reasons why you should be looking to work with our sponsor, the Auto Mover. There's none of this, you know, oh, yeah, no, you get matey turned up with egg down his shirt and all that nonsense. No, he's going to turn up, he's going to pick the car up, and you're the only load, you're a dedicated load, you've got, ve- you've got tracking of your load, and, you know, you can't ask for anyone to take better care of what you have saved and worked so hard for this new vehicle that you've bought. Whether it's a new vehicle, whether you're buying, selling, just transporting, track days, anything of the like, the Auto Mover is the man to get in touch with when it's moving anything with two wheels, four wheels, boats, trailers, cars, caravans, the whole lot. The Auto Mover is the man for you. So massive shout out to him for sponsoring this episode. Check him out. Link in the episode description. Link in the bio. Uh, use uh, ITDH in the vehicle description for 10% off. Love you, Sam. Right. Let's go. Let's cut a prank. See you later. Bye bye. And we're back. But before we get into beer of the week, a massive shout out to the sponsor of this episode, Orly Fox. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the end of the tax year is approaching. Uh, so there is no better time to sack off your useless accountant and move to the one and the only Orly Fox. You know, if you're if you're not happy with where you are, I know it can it can seem difficult because you've, you know, oh, I don't know, but no, it's not. It's not. There's no paperwork involved, there's no forms to fill out. It is as simple as speak to Karen. And then just drop in an email to your current accountant and just say, probably just to let you know from the shit going, <laughs> going <laughs> forward, I'll be using Orly Fox as my accountants. He'll be in touch to, uh, and then they will take it over from there. That's all they got to do. That's at the end of the day. That's what you're paying for. It's easier the than going down a Tesco. It is. Let Kieran take over all that, all the, all the all awkward, I'm not using it anymore. Just drop me an email. Just say, let you know, Kieran over at Orly Fox will be uh, handling my accounts from now on. And Karen and the team will take it all over from there. And speaking here, uh, knowing Karen, you're going to be in the safest hands possible. I've met loads of people that have listened to this show and have moved over to Orly Fox uh, from their accountants and say it's been absolutely fantastic. You've heard him. He's been on the show before. He's a fantastic guy and he's always up to date with the latest stuff, legislation, taxes what's coming next where you want to be what you want to be doing with what's coming down the pike next year just a fantastic guy all around and an absolutely fantastic accountant he's hungry is the main thing your man is hungry he loves it he's always on the ball with what's going on and where you need to be and where you need to be is with Orly fox so a massive shout out to them for sponsoring this episode nothing beats a good accountant as we well know uh right uh check him out link in the episode description link in the bio Big up to Kieran and the gang for sponsoring this episode. Right, Marlon, beer of the week. What have we got? So we have Jubel beer, cut with blood orange. Third Jubel we've had on the show. Uh, this one is uh, courtesy of Clarky. Yeah, big up, Alex. Thank you very much. Dad, you just open the can, you animal. You animal. Oh, we, we didn't. He wasn't briefed. Get like my Shadrach. We we uh, we didn't brief him. We didn't no, brief we him. didn't. We didn't brief him on the. Rules. I'm blaming you. People have been shot for less on this show. <laughs> Right, uh, without any further ado, Marlon, could you please read the marketing bullshit? A crushable lager bursting with a rush of blood orange. Drench your mouth in this juicy pulp that'll hug your taste buds with every gulp. Can you read? It sounds like yes, some sort of yes, erotic, but, uh, erotic No, I'm not very good at reading, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that, Chili <laughs> Cooper. I got a fucking chub on uh, here. Next line, the next line, I get you. Slide your dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, let's get into it. See what you reckon. Mm. Oh, wow. Jesus. That's fucking awesome. I really like that. I like that. That does a... That's a better version of Blood Orange than Thatcher's do. I don't know. I was going to say it's... Oh, mm. no, I don't know. It's it's crisper and drier. It's nowhere near as sweet, but the flavour's there. That Blood Orange of Thatcher's, I just find the, the, the sweetness overpowers it. Where's it come from? Kazakhstan or something? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Hedistan. <laughs> East Pakistan. Uh, uh, London. Oh. Huh. Oh. Brewed in London. Yeah, yeah. Kennington. Yeah, Kenning Kennington. Kennington Lane. Hangovers hurt. Drink responsibly. <laughs> I really like it. I think that's really It's all right. It's it's definitely sessionable. What is that, four percent? I won't lie, yeah. I like I like that more than the peach lager. Four and a half, isn't it? I think uh, I got my four, glasses. Four on the front there. <laughs> is it four, is it? Yeah. Oh, I really like that. What do you reckon, Dad? All right. <laughs> <laughs> man of few right. words. man of few words. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I really, really that's probably the best one. The lemon, no, it's not. Now, the lemon one was good. The peach one, we got the peach one on the tap at the moment. Um, that's better. Yeah. You reckon? I, the peach one is definitely better. Yeah. Well, I'm at a five out of five. What, Marlon, where are you? It's nice, it's sessionable, it's smooth. Like, Jubel do a lovely mix, don't they? They do. I'm re- it, of it, all the it, beer I'm companies, a- I'm impressed yeah. with these guys the most um, at the oh, moment. Comp- yeah, everything they seem to do works. It, yeah, I've got to say, I've always been a Beaver Town man full stop when it comes to like you know weird and wacky beers but this fucking awesome I'm at a four, four? It's, it's not it's not as good as the peach no dad where are you out of five they don't sponsor a show do they no they don't mm. three alright <laughs> <laughs> fuck them <laughs> you can have it 
All right, so overall, that's a four out of five for a Jubel uh, beer cut with blood orange. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I like it. Mm. Right. Um, where were we? We were we were just talking about um, how well, sort of how fast you were expanding our farm, really. Yeah. Um, I think what I was just about to say was you had built five sheds, and the only thing that I remember mum being very, very precious about was she was like, oh, I live in a caravan. It's, it's hard work. You know, we're getting through it. But they, obviously at the end of the static caravan with this beautiful 180 degree windows, like they all have on these static caravans, so you can look out over the sea at your holiday park. So what we could do was look out over the fields that we had. So mum really enjoyed the view because in the morning you could see the deer and the rabbits and the foxes. It was like, you know, it was like, what was it? Um, Longly. Yeah, it was like fucking long leak. But, <laughs> a tiger there in the background. You could hunt them. Um, <laughs> um, and then... Gazelle just down there. And then dad broke the news to her that he was going to build a cattle shed directly in front. <laughs> no, no, it's on, well, the, it on, on the corner of it. <laughs> Luckily, you didn't have to move the caravan because we could get the RSJ in the corner just where I want it. Oh, I mean, I, when I... <laughs> I'm not kidding you. When they were building the shed, mother was handing the cups of teas out the, the window, window. To, to the boys doing the roofing. And I think that was Gabrielle and she found it funny, but your mother didn't. No, <laughs> she was, it was, I'm, yeah, it was, you know, literally feet, feet away from the corner of the caravan was this new cattle shed that we were building. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. She were, was, were the caravans on like hard stand or anything? Yeah, yeah. they were on a hard stand. But, the, you know, you've been at the farm, obviously. Is it, is, what, the, what gradient is it? It's like one, two degree, the field, less than that, maybe. More than that, I think. Huh? Is it? I don't know. Six, maybe? I can't you remember. You're just really making know. numbers up The now. field's on a gradient. So it's on a gradient, so you have to dig in. So the, the back cut of the shed. Cut Yeah, cut in for the back of the sheds, obviously. And then and the, the front. The caravan was obviously up, raised up. Um, so like the, the fucking, the caravan was nearly level with the back of the roof of the shed, like not the roof, but the eaves of the shed. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful view. So yeah, <laughs> lovely, well, lovely. We're not only, well, we built a cat, we built a cattle shed to the left, which was a bit of a way away. So it wasn't too bad, but then I built a cattle shed to the right as well. <laughs> so all you have was this sort of tunnel vision down the end of just, yeah, sh- uh, calves on one side and uh, straw on the other. You keep a good eye on them, though. Yeah, it wasn't for long, though. No, it wasn't for long, and she—I mean, she was she was pissed off about it, but she was never like, "We're not fucking doing it." She knew. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, yeah. That was really never any question as to what was that. We are doing this. We are moving into a caravan, children. I will say, I found out we were moving into a caravan. I was always under the belief that yeah, you weren't too happy about that. Were you? <laughs> Wasn't too yeah, fucking happy. Fucking I found out in the fucking pub when he was speaking to his mate. He was like, yeah, well, fucking moving into a caravan in a couple of months time. I was like, you fucking <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've already bought one. I was like, you fucking what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that was how I found that out. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was difficult, but we, we, we moved through it. We moved through. One of Tom's mates came up one day. And his mother dropped him off, and she had high heels on. And we had plastic pig slats outside the caravan as a walkway, and she got stuck in them. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have, like, no, no, like, nice little, I'll just get some pig slats and chuck them down your green, green plastic ones, just chuck them in. That was Pete, I think. I oh, remember. yeah, Di- I mean, Diane. Yeah, yeah, it was. She always wore high heels. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Yeah, and then I made my own little path to the uh, to still my got- caravan, which was just like Sorry. some rock. Is the slats, yeah, they're still there. They still got them. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. We didn't have no special water. We got pig slats there, do we? They drain. That's what they're there for. <laughs> 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 I mean, if it works, yeah, yeah, we had some good times. It was you, well, all of us, and uh, and a Rottweiler <laughs> in, a, in a static, <laughs> and and scrumpy. Oh, and the, the and the and the terrier, yeah. And the best thing was uh, one day a terrier always came out. I was having pee in the shed and the dog kept running under me. So I kept moving and I kept pissing on him. <laughs> I oh, thought, you stupid better. dog. It gets better. A, a stupid dog. Anyway, um, I didn't think anything of it. I just pissed on the dog because he kept, <laughs> wouldn't get out the bloody way. He kept running backwards and forwards. So Gabrielle comes home from school and um, picks up a dog and cuddles the dog and goes, Dog stinks of piss, though. <laughs> oh, does it? 
Yeah, you wouldn't get it way earlier. Just drop them <laughs> on the caravan floor. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> no carpet. Straight. <laughs> Poor, thing. Poor oh, dog. Fucking dog. Remember that um that year we were there. It was so cold. I was doing an animal a B tech and animal care while I was still at school. And like it was like we had all these animals and then over the colonies, they'd take the animals home. And I was like, oh, fuck, oh, take God, no animals yeah. home. So I was like, I'll take cockroaches. They're hardy as fuck. Yeah. Not as hard as me, mate. They couldn't live for a caravan. No, winter. they didn't like the cold. Wow. <laughs> I thought, I was like, they live for a nuclear winter, but couldn't survive a fucking uh, a couple of weeks in the caravan with me, could they? <laughs> well, anyway, turns out I went back in. I remember saying to mum, like, I've killed these fucking cockroaches. I've killed the fuck. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about okay. it. You have to just go in and tell the fucking tell chuck your team, them out, tell, chuck them out in the hedge, chuck just, them out. Ch- literally, mum picked up a vivarium and just fucking <laughs> rattled, <laughs> just rattled it out like a, like a recycling bin <laughs> into the fucking hedge. I go back to school with this empty vivariums. Told my teacher what had happened. I said, "Look, I'm really sorry, but the electricity went off in the night and um, the heat mat didn't work, and they've obviously all carked it." And he was like, "Oh, right. Are they hibernating? <laughs> so they probably went in the hibernation yeah. top." <laughs> <laughs> they're in the wild now he was like they probably just went into hibernation so I was like oh sorry I thought they were dead <laughs> trying to chuck my head bro that was the other thing we didn't mention um, uh, in, a, in, in true dad fashion uh, we obviously moved up there put the caravan up there well put the calf shed up there and ring up the mains board and said oh uh what was it? Oh, we need to, we need some we need some electricity down there. So no electricity, no nothing. So obviously just fields. Fields. Quoted him. What was it? How much they quote you to put electric mains in? It the cost first? thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand. So what did he do? Fuck that. Oh, well, generator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've probably told the story on the oh, show. Well, I did it in the end. Yeah. No. No. You did. Yeah. We haven't. Now we now we have mains. <laughs> it's yeah. Still on coal. Yeah. And uh, it was only because we built, it's only because we built the house and you were like, oh fuck it, better get mains. <laughs> Him and our him and our electrician, who's a very very clever chap, they built this built a very early UPS system like a like what it te- was like, like a Tesla wall like before a, a before oh, yeah. Tesla power before it was cool. So, <laughs> yeah, when Mole Valley bought like twenty tractor batteries, <laughs> wired them all up with an inverter. So when the generator was on, he charged the batteries, and then uh, he turned generator off, and you run off the batteries until the batteries are dead. Of course, there's me playing Xbox with the boys. Just go on, on team chat, me little microphone on, like, yeah, yeah, get him, pew, 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 pew. And then, zoom, bang. That was it, gone. <laughs> and about, about 10 minutes later, after I fired it all back up, got back mm-hmm. online. But like, what happened, Reg? Tractor batteries run out? I was like, yeah, shag. Yeah. <laughs> so your sister be having a hair dryer. Oh, well, yeah. Drying her mob. Yeah, no, <laughs> Dabby Gabriel having absolutely no understanding. Watching of- the TV, and she's in there with three kilowatt <laughs> bloody thing going. <laughs> They're dead in about three minutes flat. Half yeah. an hour they lasted. Is that all it, all it was with the hairdryer or? Uh, on the batteries, yeah, with the hairdryer. <laughs> they run the TV and the lights all night. Yeah, because yeah. until yeah. someone put a heater on. And that was it. Yeah, and I, I remember taking them back in the Mo Valley after six months. These batteries are fucked. And uh, I think you better get make Mr. Remy. They're still warm. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a draw on them. <laughs> you sort of bulging a little bit. <laughs> what have you been using them for? God, you got a hell of a fleet of tractors back home. You won't believe. We got them on turnaround. I got drivers in the night. <laughs> and they they warranted it, all right? Yeah. You you never pay, you never pay uh, for one set, didn't you, I think? Uh, Wells Tire was all right. Phil was all right. But Mo Valley got a bit chewy after the second go. <laughs> <laughs> Taking under Their leisure now. batteries parallel... <laughs> they were in parallel. fucking girt things, yeah. They were all in, in like, you know, the old garden storage box you'd have out, the, yeah. the green one. They were all in there. <laughs> all wired up to a Phoenix inverter. Yeah, yeah. it was like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then obviously we're, um, how long did you, I think it was, well, you tell me, um, you obviously kept running the pig farms at the same time as doing all these calves. Yeah, but that went in about bring the money 2009, in. 2010, when the calves started. I remember really there was, kicked off. There was one time you were doing, you you and mum were running four farms between you, just the two of you. Only for about six months. Yeah. Oh, went, no, it was, only for half a year were we running four and farms. And it went down to three. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been stretched so thin. Oh, yeah. Christ. 
That's all we did seven days a week. Work, work, work. We only went away for the first three or four years. I don't know, a couple of weekends down to Exmoor, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I remember we used to go on like... Oh, it was a good laugh though. Yeah, we used to go on family holidays when we were... Stay in a caravan? No. We, when never, we, were... we never fucking stayed in another bastard <laughs> caravan. No. I can tell no. you that. <laughs> Never do that again. <laughs> PTSD. What the fuck? See, see the bit. <laughs> only, only on at Steam Fair. We've done that many more. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that I didn't was... want to live in a tent for a week, showing the bikes. Well, it took you. I was just saying that took you ten years to uh, set foot back in the caravan. You see the yeah. Vietnam 600, <laughs> 600 yard stare in his eyes. Man, no, never I know again. Some things. <laughs> I can't go back. I, I say. <laughs> 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 seen some things man I wouldn't recommend it um yeah so um yeah I was trying to think of some other things um obviously at this time I'm I'm still at school a pain in the ass yeah I was gonna say a pain in the fucking yeah. ass <laughs> you haven't changed much no. and then uh yeah well I, I've obviously been doing weekends and that with you I remember I used to help out at weekends when you had um when we were on the pig farm I just bucket feed like a like in the long idiot. shed yeah. yeah just bucket feed on the weekends like an idiot and then um I'd obviously help you on the weekends on the with the cabs. And then I went off to college, didn't I? Yeah. Well, this is the thing, see, Marlon. And I don't I we used to straw up by hand. I always used to straw up by hand. Me and Mum used to do it. Or all the we have. All right, you're gonna have to explain straw up. Strawing up, bedding up. So you used to we had a oh, right, yeah, put in the, it all in, down in the... a passageway of the shed, you used to have a lot big line of straw bells all stacked up about four high. And you used to get up there, cut the bells. You used to throw them off the st- throw the flaps of straw off, off the stack into the pens, and you straw them all up. And we had four, I, I remember it distinctly. We had four sheds at this time, which is what's that? Eight and uh, just under eight hundred, something like four that. Four sheds would have been um, yeah, about seven hundred. Yeah, about seven hundred calves. And me and Mum would straw these up by hand. Um, why well, I, I she'd do it every day. I'd do it on weekends and, and school. So you school have to holidays. change the bed in every day. And you have to get all the old shit out. No, 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 no. Deep, just deep, deep letter. Deep letter. So it just goes right. on top, on top, on top, on top. And then when the right. calves go, you when the, the shed's empty, you muck it all out. Um, and obviously, I, that must be a fucking mess. Oh, wait. anyway, so we used to do this, and then obviously I was I'm going off to college. So that was that. I'm going off to college, and um, I went off to Kensington. I went and stayed there, obviously residential. And uh, he'd always been against straw choppers. Can't have that. Can't have straw choppers that blow that dust over those calves. That'll pneumonia. You, the lung problems, breathing issues. The within about a month of me being at college, God fuck this for a laugh. I'm buying a straw chopper. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. He went and bought a straw chopper. I don't fucking do this. Is too much like work. <laughs> After his little slave went off to college. <laughs> yeah, was no, little slave. Efficiency. Little slaves got a brand new. 11 ton JCB in a big oh, yeah. tally hall. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. Now, I'm a happy man now. Yeah. Slave's got a heated seat. <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a taller slave now. <laughs> yeah. I want to say a little bit, backtracking a little bit about innovation, Dad. Yes. Um, not trying to blow your own trumpet or make you blow your own trumpet here, but I've always seen that you're a bit of an innovator in the industry. Mm. Tesla wall before Tesla walls were cool. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just... That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, something the like that. Atomic bomb. <laughs> 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 um, but also, um, especially even on the pigs. So like, going back to then, you were the one that didn't design it. Obviously, you came up with the idea. For... I came up with the idea, and I got uh, Roland's brothers to make a machine to feed outdoor pigs without chucking it out manually. It was like a, it was kind of like a straw chopper, but for yeah, for cake, cake. rolls. So it like it have a spout and it blow the cake out, like oh, blow it out, calibrate it, and it count down. You set up the the counter and the tractor, and it count down and stop. Yeah, go to the next paddock, Same. bang, and it blow it out hundred foot, hundred and fifty foot into the field. So you wouldn't have blokes out there shoveling mm. fucking cake, like, yeah. And the same with the low loader, wasn't it? The sow low loader. Oh, yeah, we're the first ones to have a hydraulic trailer to pick up size from the floor instead of going up the tailboard. So, yeah, you're literally, your trailer would drop down. Drop down. The, yeah, drop right down to the floor. Your wheels were on hydraulic rams. Yep. On the angle legs. They drop. Yeah, yeah, big, big triangular profiles. And they just, like that. I think it's common as fuck now. Like, yeah. in, in the car scene, especially for oh, are they? decked cars, yeah. 
Oh, right. I didn't know that. God, look at him. Yeah. Trail this was in 88, 89. Mm. Yeah, that's way before they were cool. Yeah, and obviously moving on to the, into, the calf, into the calf thing. I've said it before on the show, um, but you've, um, you took a lot of what you learned in the pig game over to the beef industry. Yeah. Um, I'll be the, I'll say it if you won't. When we got to the, when we turned, well, you turned up, I turned up, whatever, into the calf industry, it was nowhere near as automated, shall we say, no. as the pigs were. I don't, I didn't, I don't think anyone had seen an auger system in a calf shed or, you know, it was all very labor intensive. Yeah. All the ones that we'd been to go and have a look at and other ones that we knew of. And, um, I think with what dad was, what dad envisioned of, well, I'm not taking on many staff and I want to do loads and loads of animals. So the only way to do this is to automate as much as I can and yeah. make it efficient. And like I said, in the pigs, you had to be really efficient to make fuck all. Yeah. And got to the, got to the calves and thought, well, if we're really efficient here, we can make a fair screw. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, I mean, the calf sheds, you put these augers in, didn't you? Yeah. Press a button, feed the whole lot. They're still there. Yeah. The original ogres. Yeah. From 17 years. And then running. when we had, when we got to, what was it? Four sheds or five sheds of cattle. You were like, we had a, four old, sheds. We had an old mixer. Like an old, it was a 250 liter mixer. It was like a, imagine a wheelbarrow. 200 liters, I think. 200. Yeah. Imagine a wheelbarrow, but upright. So like a 200 liter drum with two wheels and a big handle on the back and a big tap at the bottom. Imagine like a small IBC on wheels. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had to feed calves like this, and we were feeding them on teat feeders. So basically, each calf was on a teat. And when we got to four sheds, the old man was like, fuck this for a game of marbles. This is bullshit. <laughs> so I mean, this guy is like, right, we're going to streamline all this bullshit. Fuck this. <laughs> so he rings up a, a plastic manufacturer and goes, right, what I need is a trailer that will hold about 600 litres I want a massive great load of flex pipe on it to drag all the way up the shed and back down. And I want a petrol pump nozzle and I want an inline flow meter so I can see what I'm dosing out. Oh, uh, no, we gave him the pump. Oh. I gave him the milk pump out of dairy. <laughs> Horror. Yeah. And uh, we put the meter on it, a diesel mm. meter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's inline for, flow meter. Fuel only. <laughs> 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 and then obviously put a, a mixer, like a. Um, Motor on the top with a shaft mm. and then a paddle at the bottom. So you pour the milk powder in, press a button, and it whips it all up. And uh, they, yeah, they built us. They built us one, didn't they? It's the original. It's the, it's they the first... have it, and they saw on the wall at Wido. Yeah, and you'll you'll see you'll see that if you go to agricultural shows, you'll see that Wido with these milk trolleys going around. And we were the ones that Dad was like, "This is what I want. Build it." And they put a uh, fair play to him. Bill they, Robin they did, Wyatt built it. He built the thing, and it was fantastic. And then we thought, "Well, I'm not doing this Wido bollocks anymore with teat feeders because that's a pain in the ass." So I'm going to buy troughs. So could have could have bought troughs. No, not not him. <laughs> no. Ah, oh, fuck that. I'll make them. So we bought some Brett Martin pipe. Cut it in half lengthways. <laughs> <laughs> welded some, like plastic welded some end caps on and then put brackets on them so you could bolt two either side to the gate mating each other. Like, so you have one on this side and one on that side, brackets. Well, I have a 20 length piece of pipe. You cut it in half. Okay, and then cut it in half. And cut it in half. Lengthways. Yeah, you get four troughs out of 20 foot length of and then oh. put end caps on and then put and your grandfather did that. Yeah, I remember. Me. Would have got a chalk line and a sip, um, yeah. circular saw and then bolted them either side of the gates. So then, all you got to do is get your milk pump, and you blow it in, all the way up to the end of the trough, and that's it. You can feed, feed a load of calves like that. Yeah. Efficiency is key. Well, yeah, that was it. It was all... I mean, I don't... He probably won't say it, but I'll say it for him. Um, it's always been, how can we be more efficient? How can we, instead of hiring someone to do this, like we could... You pay someone. That'd be a full day to go around and feed those cal those calves twice a day. You pay someone 30, 30, 35 grand a year to do that. And it's like, well, we will spend that on augers in one go and never have to spend, never have to yeah. pay for it again. Yeah. So yeah, um, going on from that, um, you obviously built all our sheds back home, and uh, then we got on to building a house. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. While I was at college, that was right, wasn't it? 
Just yeah, it was being twenty ten. It started. Yeah, I was at I was at college twenty eleven. We moved into it. That's right. I was um I was at college Sorry. till about twenty twelve. So no, yeah. So I, I reckon I was in it only in it for a many year. moons. I go. I've only been in it for about a year until I moved out. <laughs> All that time in a caravan, I was out of it. But um, yeah, and then obviously everything fucking changed pretty quick, didn't it? Um, yeah, when mum got diagnosed. Yeah. With MND. 2013. Yeah. All that fucking time, all that work. And she only managed she lived to... in it 18 months before she got diagnosed with that. Yeah. Which was shit. Yeah. Did you... What was going through your head when mum got diagnosed farm-wise? Obviously not... Were you thinking... Was there ever a point, basically, where you thought, fuck this, jack it all in, no. sell it? No. No. Not at all? Just push on and keep going? But the, yeah, the you thing you've worked so hard mind, for. Yeah, take your mind off it. Yeah. Well, I didn't take my mind off it, did it? You know, it, it just, um, I did most of my mourning before your mother died. Yeah. Because she thought she'd go on, but I knew at the back of my mind it was. It was terminal, yeah. It was the end. Yeah. It's not like cancer, is it? You might have a chance. No, this, no. It's this a, was. A death sentence. Yeah. From as soon yeah. as. Yeah. Yeah. Shit time. But. Like you say, we didn't start. You didn't start. We st- uh, did, we do a, did we do any building in that time? I don't think we did, did we? Uh, I think we built the garages and flat. That's right. And the workshop. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, we did that. And that co- was all. Yeah. That uh, wasn't a big job. <laughs> workshop, garages, <laughs> flat. Now we, nah. we have too much on. It's a very quiet season. <laughs> Obviously, with, um, with mum being diagnosed, and as I've said before, it was a degenerative disease yep um there was no point where you thought i'm gonna take someone else on or i'm gonna get someone in the 24 hours a day to care for us when get out on the yard well no no because we we looked after her pretty well i think oh yeah no we did i just didn't know if uh, what what was your what was your thinking of i can afford it could i i had the bank like three quarters of a million yeah, <laughs> I suppose, yeah. But I think, coming from me, I think it was amazing, really. I think it really showed fucking true grit from you, more than anything. And this fucking great farm to run. Your wife's been diagnosed with a terminal illness. You're up all hours of the night with her, because it was, well, I wasn't there, but I remember you coming down in the morning saying, I ain't got fucking no sleep. Fucking mother yeah. was struggling and all that. And yet you still managed to get up in the morning, put in a day's work between me, you, Gabriel, and then all of mum's friends, God bless them, that would come yeah, over in a day. They, they were help. God sense, all of them. And it was only, God, it was only in the last year, I reckon, we actually got some some carers in just to help in the day. Yeah, give Dorothy House her hat, uh, Jew. They, um, that was the old charity, wasn't it? They were they fantastic. They did bloody well. Mm-hmm. And obviously, when um, when we lost mum, and you still you you That's still nine years on Sunday. I know, scary. I only realised that the other day. There was no point after we lost mum that you you sort of took a step back and thought, oh, you know what? I don't know how long we're here. Maybe I'll just fucking sell it all. And no, no, no. Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Well, your sister wanted to come back, didn't she? <laughs> Oh, I gotta keep it on. Gabriel wants a job. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from nine hundred to fourteen hundred in one go. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did. We yeah, rented in- the buildings up the road. Yeah. And in one go that November, which is nearly well, yeah, nine years. We went from nine hundred to fourteen hundred, Carl. <laughs> Well, it just kept me busy, didn't it? Kept your mind off things. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the story of where we are now and where you are now, more to the point. Um, mm-hmm. A few questions. Yep. If you had to do it all again, yeah. would you still employ Reg? <laughs> i got to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> if I know what I do now, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. I was. I won't deny it. I was. Uh, we got on really well now. Yeah, there were times where I was fucking useless. And there's not work. many father and sons work together. No, fuck me, no. 
No. Well, I don't work with him all the time. I have to work with the other fake daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I was a fucking pain in the ass when I, in my, Still are. in my late teens, early twenties, not turning up some mornings, being fucking late, falling out all the time. Fuck this. I don't fucking need this. I can go out and do something else. Uh, we had some fallouts, mine. Oh uh, yeah. Me. Yeah. I kind well, of then, like, I think like all father and sons that work together on family farms, I went off for, went off for a year ish. And then I went on and did a bit of contract milking um and then i realized how fucking bullshit that was and how much i hated early mornings you matured a little bit it definitely yeah and it's it's more it gives you a sense of you know you don't know you don't realize how good you had it and yeah. then you come back and you go fuck me this wasn't that bad it wasn't like fucking <laughs> milton 1200 cows three times a day fuck that nonsense yeah but i did say to tom i said look i know you need to do your bit but you need to come back and help me with your mother yeah yeah, yeah. yeah obviously yeah yeah and, and, and to be fair to um my boss at the time, Dom, your best mate, yeah. who was running the dairy, he was good as gold about it. He, you bring him up and say, oh, I need Tom tomorrow, and that'd be it, and I'd be gone over there back home because he, yeah. he knew that the benefit of obviously him being a long term family friend and knowing my mum as well, he understood yeah. and he yeah. was more than happy to let me fuck off back to the family farm and help the TB testing or whatever. But yeah, and no, I'll be the first to admit, I was a fucking asshole. I was, I was, I was fucking hard work. I was a real shit. Because you're just like, oh, I can, fuck, I can I, imagine it. The thing is, it was like, you know, it, ah, fuck you. It yeah. was, well, it was, it was hard, you know, mum was, mum was dying. You know, I was, we were working seven days a week. There was no weekends off. I remember, I think it was I, the one time I'll always remember, I worked nine days without, uh, nine days? Fuck that. Nine months I worked without a day off, I remember. What? I did. You, you're going to say, what? Hey, eh? I did. Nine months I worked without a day off once. But, um, yeah, that was, I was like, fuck this fucking nonsense. And it was, we, we, he, dad was obviously stressed with everything that's going on. I was stressed and yeah, it would come to a head a few times, but I never left. I had a, a fucking, no. there were a few times, but. We had some rows, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we stuck it through. Um, in that same vein, looking forward to the future, how difficult do you think it's going to be to hand over the reins? It can be that bad, is it? I'm getting older. No, but in a in a sense of you've built all this, you've built the whole fucking thing. Do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's going to be hard letting go? No, until the loans are paid off, the pension. Once that's done, you can have it, and I got the pension fund. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's your fucking problem. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume because Reg has been there for ever nearly. You know what he's capable of. It ain't going to be that difficult going, right, I've had enough now. Um, it's yours now. I think there'll be, a, I, I assume, that, well, I like to think there's be quite a transition period. Oh, but, yeah, there will be. Yeah, he'll come up and interfere a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he'll be, he'll be, the old man getting on the <laughs> way on the yard. Right. Oh, get out of the fucking way, father. That's not what we do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. He won't be able to sell it because I'll still be the MD. Yeah, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll still be bringing him up to sign paperwork. <laughs> Dad, I need you to sign off on this. I just ordered another JCB. Well, hang on, I better come and have a look at that. <laughs> no, no, I don't think. I reckon there's a. I reckon there's a. I reckon there's a better deal to be had elsewhere. Have you rang this person? <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I think like you said, I think I, I've You'll got be the first one with the black paint next time. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, God. Oh, straight up, black JC. I'm not messing. Next one's black. No ways about it. Once you go black, you ain't going back, baby. I can't wait. Oh, imagine trying to keep that cut dirty, oh, clean. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. I've already, I've already had a chat with them down there. Yeah, don't worry. It's all in the. It's all I let you do more now, anyway. What with? Um, what do you mean? What? Involving you more and in oh, business? definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been, a, it's been like I'd say, it's been a real. I wouldn't trust them. I think the the difference is, and it, I, it, I've compared myself to a lot of farmer's sons over the years. Um, in that, like, oh, I look at other people and think, oh, they're like running the job and like they're doing this and they're doing that. But what I've got to remember is that they're they were they were most of them were handed the farm from the, their father to then you know then they got their son and they're quite happy to be like, well, I was handed it, you know, you crack on. Whereas dad's built the whole place from yeah. fucking scratch, so he's gonna be. I think you are way more involved, and I wouldn't say precious, but definitely more hands-on, and this is how, because I've built it, this is how we do it, and I've been more than happy to sort of, you know, take a, not a lesser role, but be a bit more, you know, 
back from things in the sense because it's it just it all moves so fast. Yeah. And I, I really, I just, I've, I've got enough to do on the fucking yard. I ain't got time to do paperwork, but I'm going to have to learn it sometime. And I, <laughs> <laughs> he's in there till bloody seven o'clock at night sorting out yeah, bills. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, yeah, you, yeah. The amount of time he's spending the evenings doing something, if I'm not in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't want to compare it to the podcast because it's nothing like the podcast, but like watching. Not going to the pub. <laughs> well, that, yeah, well yeah, you, yeah, you could compare it to going yeah, to the pub, some really. similarities there, but like the paperwork side of things, like Beth's up till she'll come in from work and she'll do an hour on the computer, and then yeah, join the, the next pub. day she'll That's do an I've hour done on quite the well, really, because I managed to avoid the paperwork side of the farm and the podcast. I just get to do all the fun bits. You know, drive JCBs and sit in here and drink beer. <laughs> God, I got this worked out, and I maybe I shouldn't stop. Thank fuck, <laughs> Beth is an accountant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what you've obviously, you know, you've blown your own trumpet. You've done really well for yourself, Dad. Yeah. You're an inspiration to me, definitely. But what would you, what advice would you give to anyone else that's looking to do something that something similar to you've done? Basically, going out on your own and building a farm, or taking over a farm, or starting a farm. It's going to be hard work because the banks don't want to give you any money anymore. No, no. What would you say to people? In uh, in lessons that you've learned and the things that you sort of go by, whether it be buying kit or designing stuff or building sheds or that kind of stuff, do you you know when it comes to building sheds, you're always one for efficiency and sim- um, sim- making things simple. Well, you just get the best price and you do as much as you can yourself. Yeah, That's don't just let someone just take over the reins and do it all. No. I mean, we even, I even made the bloody consumer boards, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So normally all I had to do is join up all the telemechanique stuff. Yeah, I literally come in, wire it in. And we laid all, the, done. laid all the armour cable. All you've got to do is join the wires up. That's where a lot of the money's lost in these builds, isn't it? Well, it caught the, we did as the, much as we could. Ourselves, yeah. And let yeah. the people commission it to warrant it, like yeah. the gale breakers. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. We did most of that ourselves. They we come had- in for a day, put the screens in. So they warranted it. We had the we put in these gale breaker screens. The first that's the is that the, the uppy downy ones? Uppy downy screens, yeah. yeah that's the ones. VVSs. Um, when we had the uh, the f- first shed we did, they came in and built the whole thing, and a lot of people would just be like, "Let them crack on." No, you, Not, I expect Mark had a look at that and went, "I there. could fucking do that myself. <laughs> I could fucking do that." So yeah. the next one we did, yeah, and then well, the next one and the next five we did, yeah, the next five we did ourselves, and then they just turn up, run the screen in. Do a few little bits and then t- take it off for the warranty. And they're they're happy with their more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've got enough work on. They're more than happy just to turn up yeah. the screening. But because you did it yourself, when something goes wrong, you know it works. Yeah, and he knows what to do if a cable breaks or anything like that. Yeah, how to repair the bloody thing. Yeah, yeah, which is invaluable because Until there's the no lip- downtime. Like, yeah, if you built it yourself, you know exactly how it all yeah, works. You know, you know where all, everything's ran. All the wires are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not you're not ringing up someone or trying to dig through plans to try and find out where the cables were laid in your field because you laid them. You know what, what I mean? What's the advantages of the up and downy screens? Is it just airflow through the yeah, basically it's, it's, the ventilation? Yeah, it was with calves. It was very ventilation is like a huge thing. Well, a lot of people have tubes down through the middle of the shed with fans that blow in air over uh, them. Right, these them positive pressure. You can put them down, and you get. Natural airflow. It's basically like a contr- it's like a controlled natural environment, like a venturi. I don't know what that is. Um, On a carburetor, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, Tom, go. over your right then. Yeah. <laughs> Not a Oops. fucking clue. <laughs> All I know is plug the computer in, clear the faults, driver on. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to like buying stuff and doing deals, Dad, you've all I've always. I've always said that every um, every feed rep that comes out of your office always tells me he feels like he's been beaten over the head, and it's like, well, no, it's our decision to sell me that at that price. So <laughs> that is a very good point. It's like nobody the, had a gun to the head. No, exactly. <laughs> you you decided to sell me that at, at that, that price, price, so don't piss me about. Yeah, <laughs> like anything, like buying a shed, and someone coming at me, I didn't make any of that. Well, you decided to sell me that. I didn't. I don't, yes, I don't care. You don't make any money out of it. You, you agreed sold, on the price. You yeah. agreed on the price. 
Yeah. You could have said no. Ex- yeah, exactly. Doing a business deal with my old man is like doing a business deal with the mob. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I cut your fingers This is off. the price you're going to do it at. No, I'm not. Well, you won't do it then. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> they do it and then they're like, I'm making nothing out of this. You signed the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what advice would you have for your younger self, Dad? Mm-hmm. If, you were to, if you were to go back to the start, looking Ooh. at what you've done now, what would you tell yourself fifth before building the farm, what, 18 years ago? Yeah. What would you say, do this, don't do that, do this differently? Or are you so... I got to think about immaculately this. Immaculately perfect that nothing has gone <laughs> wrong and it's all been plain sailing. Oh, you got me there. Ever, I would say buy some fucking concrete, you tight bastards. But <laughs> I'm doing that this year. I know, I know. We didn't have money to be doing concrete back then. That doesn't make money, does it? No. Well, we didn't have shiny kit. At we, didn't the start. Have, we didn't have fuck all. We borrowed a zeter. Borrowed and steal. We borrowed a zeter, didn't we? And yeah, we, from the pig farm. From the pig farm. That I still had. Yeah. I made total use of what the facilities I had. I'm told, yeah. I was told, I've told the story before of when we were putting up these. We didn't have a telehandler back then. We have, obviously, fucking only got a telehandler in 2015. Um, and we're I know, like, and we've heard about it ever since. It's my favourite thing in the fucking world. Yeah, I know. I love it. Um, Apart from when it breaks. Uh, this one's going to be good as gold. No, this one's fine. Yeah, touch wood. Um, I was told a story we were putting up, like, auger systems. You obviously hang them from, you suspend auger systems from the shed, from the from the roof, from the purlins. It's like a big bin, isn't it? Uh, the, no, the bin is the, that's the bolt bin, and then you have a big line with, like, a, like an Archimedes screw. Like a screw. Archimedes screw. Yeah. yeah, and that's what takes Centerless it. auger. Yeah. And uh, so what we um, what we do, we were hanging this auger, and we got this old old ninety old ninety zeter with a with a man cage that's been. Um, was, are you squeaking that? That's going to annoy the hell out of me when I come oh. to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> On that, yeah, I could hear it. Um, it's yeah, like Hitler in here sometimes. Oh, I am. God, it's been yeah. nine. We uh, will ask the questions. <laughs> And he um he got his man cage ratchet strapped with the forks of this thing, <laughs> and then the problem is that the bloody return valve on the loader is gone. So Creeps. he's he's you, you start working you like get up there. you start working <laughs> at your chest, and then you end up working at full extension over your head. And the old man will run down the loader, jump back in the cab, starting up, lifting back up, then climb back up again. Jump on a bonnet and jump in the gun cage. <laughs> and, yeah, it was it would have been easy to have um bought a nice shiny fucking tractor out the gate, wouldn't it? Didn't have the money. Well, no, we, but you could have financed it. You could have uh, begged and borrowed the uh, the money, and we didn't have a. We didn't buy a. Tr- we didn't buy a tractor until two years after. Oh, how many sheds did we have? Two thousand and eight. How many sheds? We'd have had two uh, sheds by then. three sheds. Three sheds by then. Three sheds. So, uh, what still got it. Yeah, brilliant tractor. Fucking Landini, best damn tractor in the world. Fucking well, the best tractor, in the, the best making the world. That tractor is the best thing in the world. Still with the original battery on it, mind. From 2008. Mm. And that thing starts every single time. How? No, don't ask me. It does. It does. I, you won't start it for two months. Do you know why? Because fuck all electrics in now. Well, so when there's, he's no, there's no parasitic that, drain, is there? That key is an isolator as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. When he's off, everything is off. But it's like out in the and when cold. You, and when you and... start it up, the only thing that's going live is the starter motor and the glow plugs. Other than that, there is nothing no. else turning on. Yeah, there's no fucking electro, no bloody computer system firing up, no sensors. Use. <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> no bloody computer system. No, no, I bet he's still on no flash. Regeneration no regeneration or all that. No, no, she's no just fucking a, DPS on her. No ad blue on it. She's so. just a straight six Perkins. Yeah, blows black smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And when, you, and when you park it into the wind and don't drive it for two months, you <laughs> he Blow blows like, water. Yeah. <laughs> no, re- it, are you going to put a fucking ding ding on her? No, no, it's like a uh, like a, a, chi- like a chisel tip on there. Yeah, so it just fucking <laughs> blows in. You start. I, I still don't understand how that battery's lasted. I, it, I, you know, don't ask no questions. Well, rats haven't got into it, have they? No, we would like to get in there. No, like, else. It, like it degenerates. Batteries die. It is original battery. Don't ask me. Thing, it's still got Landini on the side of the battery. Yeah. Fucking weird, isn't it? It must be a monster great. It's a monster great engine to turn over. Yeah, yeah, six cylinders. Six point seven liter, six cylinder <laughs> Perkins. She's a big old girl. Yeah, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Um, I think something that I thought would wind Marlon up because I love to do this. And Is it's this like, the, the question I want to ask. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, do you want to ask? No, it? you carry on. No, no, you carry on. No, you carry on. Well, you do you. I was going to no. ask about Land Rovers. Yeah, I was going to ask about Land Rovers. <laughs> God. Right, where does this fucking weird obsession come from? 
Well, I've had Land Rover since 94. 30 years. Was that the Disco? That was your first one? No, I had a 300 TDI. Oh, the grey one? As a company car, didn't I? Farm vehicle. Yeah, farm vehicle. Yeah. Was that series or? No, it would have been yeah, 94. So one of the first, first 300s that would have been, wouldn't it? It would have been, yeah. Yeah. And that cost 13 grand plus fat. <laughs> <laughs> now, they cost 50 plus fat, don't they? At least. So let's, uh, I was, I was going to go through the Land Rover history. Oh, oh God. Right. Go through the whole lot. What I've had? Yeah, everything. Start to finish. Because everyone, everyone knows that I'm Land Rover mad and I've spoken about it, we've had loads of Land Rover. And there's a reason that you're Land Rover mad. Yeah, so fucking him. It's your fault. Because hey, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's taking it on. He's he? an idiot. Oh, yeah. tell you what, youngin, you get in Land Rovers, you never have enough money for drugs. So, and he's fucking <laughs> right. <laughs> Man's got a good point. <laughs> he's fucking right. <laughs> Yeah, so first uh, you had a you had a disco, didn't you? Brand, uh, brand yeah. new, yeah, ninety five. You said that was nothing but fucking hassle. Yeah, that went in two years. Wasn't that diesel, petrol, <laughs> diesel, three hundred TDI? Yeah, Niagara uh, Grey N Reg, early one. He was the one with the, the spare wheel on the back that had the little cover with the center bar, didn't it? You know what I mean? No, he didn't. No, no he just had a cover over it. Oh, did he? Oh, uh, right. Yeah, that were five door. Yeah, seven seater. Or not yeah, seven. he was. They were. Yeah, he had seats in the back. Fucking hell. Now, you said that was nothing but fucking hassle, that thing. Well, a lay shaft went in it. Lay shaft? Marlon? What's a lay shaft? In the gearbox, mate. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, that he doesn't know all, does he? <laughs> I don't know why. I... Yeah, I don't know Next why. Next one was a, a 2.5 uh, DSE BMW engine. P38. Ranger. Ranger. Yeah, that was, that was new as well, wasn't it? Mm. Next one was... Nothing the. Yeah, he went. That was a manual, wasn't it? Yeah, a manual. Oh, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. Quite rare. Yeah. Next one was a uh, 50th anniversary V8. 4 litre V8. Defender 90. Still got it. Yeah, that's the one we restored. Never yeah. again. Never a fucking again. What was the next one? At a Westminster? No, no. It was the, it was the 4 litre P38 HSE. T8LRO. Oxford oh, right, yeah. That's that in the one. barn scrap because Tom blew it up. That's a three head gaskets on it before you gave it to me. You gave it to me. I never touched it. Yes, you did. That I'd done two head you gaskets. You touched it and fucked it. Uh, Can't have nothing nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, a, a four litre Rover engine on an LPG. It did head gasket. Oh, who would have thought? They Fuck. are shit. Engine. They run hot anyway, and then we ran them on gas. And yeah, just, that's not good. We idea. just cooked them. Uh, yeah, then you had uh, we a have, third, yeah. A 30th anniversary P38, 4.6. Yeah. yeah. And then... I still got that one. Yeah, Westminster. Yeah, your mother rolled that. That was the, beat not, that the nicest one we ever had. Took down yeah, that was a nice car. Took down a, a wall and two trees. No, yeah. a, two walls and a tree with that. With your sister in it. Yeah. Both walked out. She texted me. She's like, I've had a crash. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? She's like, no, I've written off a Range Rover. Guys. <laughs> I was like, which one? She's like, Westminster. I was like, for fuck's sake! He's only done like 80,000 miles. He I know. He, he's a lovely car. And she hit every fucking paddle. Yeah. Not <laughs> every wheel. Every was... panel, every wheel. It was fucked. Yeah. It was the only one. It was the only one that the air suspension never, never gave us any grief. The El- it never did a head gasket. It was like perfect in every way. Yeah, we did buy it back off the insurance company and took the engine out and put in the old Oh, but in the, yeah, the, the, the 50th. Which, that one blew up. Yeah. And then, oh, what do you have after that? That was it, wasn't it? Uh, that was it until you, um... Had a bit of a breather for a while. Yeah, a few years. I think you, you always need, like, a few years off when you own <laughs> Land Rovers. Because you need to, like, <laughs> mentally recover. Yeah. <laughs> I was like me. I had that P38, and then that was nothing but trouble, and then blew up. And then I had a Golf and a Lupo, and then I bought a Freelander, and I had that for a while that we built. You built more than anything. And I was like, oh, then I'll buy a P38 again. Then that was nothing but pain and anguish. And now I'm like, right, now I have a few years off Range Rovers. Um, yeah, and then you went and, then you went and bought um, yeah, and bought a, a few Defenders, didn't he? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bought three. Three? Well, the new ones, you're all right. No, the, the, the 2015 ones. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> your man more pulled his four digits. Ah, I forgot about that little one. All the vendors in here. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah, they're in a the shed somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I, well, we still got more. Your, your sister's got one. Yeah, you got we got one as a farm truck. Yeah. Oh, no, we built in between there. You bought the Batmobile, the yeah. red red Defender. Yeah, it's gone now. Yeah. Got fed up repairing that. He went to a, a, a caver friend of ours. He passed away. Mother was very, very good friends with him. She was in the caving club with him, the BEC. Tony Jarrett used to own um, uh, Bat Products in yeah, Wales. Yeah, Animals. Yeah, dad went off to, the mum and dad went off, they did a charity auction, similar to what we did down the down the uh, Hunters in, um, Hunters? It, wasn't it was it? in the hall, actually. I was in the hall. Pretty, pretty village hall. I, I said, all right, they said, we'll go off his auction then. I said, all right. And don't wait off his stupid. Sit, don't, don't wait off his, don't get too pissed. Don't wait off his stupid. They came back bollocks. We bought a fender. It's <laughs> <laughs> was like, fucking great. <laughs> uh, fucking Land Rover. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, I got your, and then bought four Defenders. It's got that heritage. That yeah. is gorgeous. Oh, that, that is thing. pretty. That is pretty. That's never, uh, well, mm. yeah, that's that. It, it never been out, has it? No, no, never been gone anywhere. She's the investment driver. She's commercial as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, they, did, uh, did they make them in non-commercial? Yeah, they did. Yeah. The, the, one, the 110 was a, was a station wagon and yeah. the 90 was a station wagon. Yeah. But for some reason, they did a, they did a commercial version. So They made 400 of all three. Yeah, that's right. So I would imagine... 125, something like that, 100? 100. 100 commercials, 190s. I've two, never uh, seen another one. I've seen a couple. Yeah, I've seen a couple. And then, uh, and then yeah. And then, yeah, the new, and then the new Defender kit. Oh, no, no, then you, hang on a minute. We're, we're yeah, missing a load. Tight. Whoa, we're whoa, missing whoa, a load whoa. here. Then you went daft and bought two bloody Range Rover Sports for no good. No, it a Freelander. And then you went and bought two Range Rover Sports for no good reason other than you just enjoyed pain. <laughs> I didn't mean that bad. <laughs> what, uh, two, two sevens or three litres? Three litres. Why? You've got defenders. Like, you don't need a headache. Well, it's a friend of ours, and um, they said whenever you sell it. Give me a shout. For a shame. Why did I do it? I d- it's, it's like a disease, Land Roverism. <laughs> it, 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 it gets hold of you, and you just buy. Land Rovers and it's just awful. I've preached about it enough on air. I, I they keep me in work. We haven't spent that much money on it. I don't think. On um, what Land Rovers collectively or the sports? I was going to say because collectively you probably could have bought another fucking farm. <laughs> 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 they are a, they're a nice car. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's like, the, when they're fucking working, they are fantastic. That's the thing. No, there. No one can turn around and say, "Oh, Range Rovers are shit cars." They're not. They're fantastic. One of the most beautiful cars you'll ever drive. But it's just the upkeep of the, the fucking yeah. things. They're not the cheapest to service. No, 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 not at all. Because like the oil that goes in, like the three liters, for instance, it's like ten, twelve quid a liter. Is that was that zero twenty or no? It's five thirty, but it's a lamb spec. Oh. I on. think the stuff that went in the V8 was like 18. Yeah, that's zero, yeah. That's zero 20 in that the, one. What, the new one? Yeah. Yeah, no, that'll be, yeah, proper spec stuff. Eight yeah. litres went in that. Is that right? Five litre V8? Yeah, it'd be about yeah. right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the three sixes hold 9.3. Do they? Oh, do they? Rush. I remember, yeah, those... Old... Why's oil got so expensive? <sighs> uh, s- blame the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I I'll that. tell you what, years ago, the TDI, the old Range Rovers, and the tractor had the same oil. Yeah, he used to buy yeah. It. Yeah, it was five, long drain. 1540 long drain. You used to chuck it in everything. <laughs> everything. The Landini and you the V8. You put 1540 in a TD5? No, no, in the, no, um, in the 4 litre V8. They take 1540. It, it was a, and the oh, and oh. P38. What are you putting them? 530? Can't 530 be. goes in TD5, yeah. No, in the, in the 4 litre V8s. We used to put 1540 in them. I don't know, I don't service anything, do I? You used to service a Landini and use the same barrel to service <laughs> the Range Rovers. Hey, you don't service anything. I thought you were a mechanic. Yeah, I do electrical shit. Oh, right. He does the complicated stuff now, yeah. <laughs> don't remember the last time we did a service. Maybe I need bring him back in. Yeah, then you finally treated yourself, didn't you? Finally, after all these years. And you? Of, well, yeah, no, yeah. I know. <laughs> Fucking hell. There's no praise here, is there? I was just trying to say it's a nice thing because you were humming an R in for years. You, oh, I might, I, 
I quite like a Bentley. I'm not fucking buying that. Oh, look at what. And then oh, I like an Aston one day, but I ain't fucking buying that. And then in the end, yeah, we, um, yeah, finally got yourself your dream car, Dad, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Five liter V8 Defender and a new one. Yeah. Fuck me out of some car. It's some bit some fucking terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> when you go to overtake something, you got to, it squats, you got it? to put, yeah, you got to pull out pretty quick so you don't take the back corner <laughs> off the next car. <laughs> <laughs> what horse Faraday? 500? 525. Yeah. It's a 90 as well, so he's even like, <laughs> <laughs> gotta go, dog. It's a, he hates 110s. He hates them. I just, it's just like driving a bus, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're not that much longer. <laughs> but there's no, I, I, I wouldn't want a B8 110. No, we had right. a 130 in the other day. Oh, Ooh. God, that's like a hearse. Oh, what, they're uh, what, huge. A TD5, or a, a TD5 or a new one? A new shape. Oh, they're so pretty. How real they're do you want massive. one? massive. You what? I've, we were literally <laughs> talking about this the other day. I was like, you want a 130? I told you I've priced up a 130, and you're like, oh, how'd you get on with that? Are you going to fucking afford that? Yeah, I, I was like, no, I can't. They're really expensive, Dad. They're like 90 fucking grand. Yeah, no, I really want a 130. I think it's cool. I wanted an old 130. I think they're fucking badass. Yeah, they're huge, aren't they? Girt ass on them. Huge. You turn you turn Where the corner. Where are you going to park the pissing thing? I don't fucking I'll worry about it. You're driving a multi story with an ordinary car now. It, you get out. There's yeah. no room, is there? Oh, I don't know. I'm parking the disabled. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said to you, like I said on air the other day, you just get out and go, not all disabilities are visible. <laughs> and I, I went full Ali G spec. <laughs> yeah, when the, I realised what I did. Grab the leg to start limping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Christ. So, yeah. And that, and that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I've got a fucking Land Rover obsession, thanks to this man here. <laughs> I've tried to talk out of him many, many times. It's Couldn't have just like a fucking football, could you? Couldn't have just like the darts or something. No. Or a Ford. No, yeah, or just like something reliable. Yeah, no. had to be fucking Land Rover. Just get rid of him before the warranty runs out. Yeah, that no. With the newer stuff, that is definitely the case. Yeah, like, oh, all... I'll be honest. The new Defender, I haven't heard any bad report. Uh, I've had one in for an oil pressure problem. And that had to go back to Land Rover. Was that a two litre or a three litre? That was a three litre. Really? Yeah. That's already one. That's 2020. It. it was still Out in war warranty. Oh, was it? Why so, did they bring it to you then? Because I'm a fucking wizard. What a boy. Let's take it to fucking take Land Rover. Land Rover. We're, we're closer, aren't we? <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. Oh, people are. Land Rover know what they're doing, don't they? <laughs> Who's your fucking mate? Ems <laughs> <laughs> fighting words. Oh dear. I'm joking, Mama. That's <laughs> no, fine. <laughs> yeah. So what are your thoughts? Because everyone's heard what I think of the new Defender, but everyone thinks I'm a fucking spaz. So um, what, what are your thoughts on the new Defender, Dad? I think it's a really good car. You, I think it's uh, one of the best vehicles they've ever made. Well, this is it. You're speaking as a man who's had fucking God knows how many Land Rovers and six of the original Defenders. Six, seven of the original Defenders. Yeah, I I think it's one of the best cars. I think it's brilliant. It's, I it's heard all, the, all the mod cons. Oh, God, I haven't yeah. any bad press about it, any problems with it, like you do the yeah. Range Rovers, the Range Rover Sports, or all the other nonsense they make. Really fucking capable vehicle as well. Yeah. Really capable. Have you tried it off-road? I haven't, no. I need to. I've, I, fuck it, I must really capable. Never tried it off-road. I know that. I, I've seen all the fucking... Not the... <laughs> you're, shit, anyway. you're a dickhead. I've seen all the stuff they've done, like independent off-road tests and that with, with the new one compared to the old one. But I do, I do need to go on a lot of experience day. I think I've still got one. we got one left, I think. Is that it? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've gone. Well, yeah. a friend of ours who's got one. Oh, is he? In, well, you know who it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Took it out in the field. And he went to throttle it. It wouldn't let him do it. The Land Rover took itself out. Oh, really? And that oh. was on road tires. Oh, yeah, they've got that, yeah. like the, It's all, uh, yeah. It's like, it, oh, it's, it's too much work. It wouldn't let you throttle it. No, you, if, it knows if you throttle it, you'll dig yourself in. Yeah. And it wants you to get out. And it took over and took itself out. Fucking hell. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Oh, well, I think that's about it, Marlon, isn't it? I reckon it is. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Dad. No, I really that's appreciate fine. it. It's been an absolute pleasure, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Fucking, okay, I get to see the other side of it now instead of just me turning up late on a on a Wednesday morning after recording on a Tuesday. Fucking podcast last night was it? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> half past seven, you break. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Land Rover broke down. <laughs> 
Yeah, all right, and Dan. Well, thanks for coming on. That's quite all right. Yeah, Thank you for it. asking me. I, I hope everyone enjoys the episode. I'm sure they will. Um, yeah, all right then. Well, I think that might do. Anything else, Marlon? Buy the merch. Buy the merch. Or go don't. On, Nobody go, cares. Join the Patreon. Don't be a fat face peasant. Help the sponsors out. We love you very much. Right. Thanks everyone for listening. I've been Reg. I've been Marlon. I've been Mark. And, Good night. Uh, yeah. We'll see you later. All the best. Love you, bye. Cheers. So get them hoodies out in a fortnight then, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah, that's a good shout, mate. Yeah.